I don't think they've landed in the UK yet. I think it's only an American thing. Yeah. Um, oh, hello. 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 How are we all hello. doing? This is quite strange. Yeah. Hello, Teresa, Mama Fox. Miranda's hiding in the darkness. <laughs> And Lady Bookworm, very much in the shadows. Mm-hmm. Who is anybody else in? Oh, Crystal's lurking as well. Cool, cool. All right. <laughs> how's it? How's it? Hello, Mum. <laughs> Hello, son. <laughs> this is literally the first time I've seen your moving face in like. I know. Do months. I look too? Is it too dark, my screen? Do I need some more light on? I mean, it's a wee bit dark, but it's personal preference, I guess, at the end of the day. Just might try a little bit of light. Miranda says she can't hear anything. Guys, meet Koji. Yeah. Hello, Ooh. Koji. <laughs> Wait, how does this work then? So if someone speaks, does it change? <laughs> oh look, the there's camera? a fox! Yay. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how this because when, when I speak oh, it changes the camera back to me. Good evening, everyone. Oh hello. Hi. <laughs> yeah, you can't see us there if they're not speaking. <laughs> hello. Is it Helena? Yes, hey. it is. Yes, hi. Ah, lovely stuff. Yeah, and I saw, um, yeah, Crystal's got her video rolling as well. And then there's um, IR as well. Cool. Yeah, I just thought, I just thought this would be, um, I know it's a bit of a, a strange concept, you could say as well, but I just thought it would be a, a fun way to sort of, especially with uh, lockdowns and Corona and all this sort of thing, just a, an extra excuse to sort of mingle a little bit and uh, and sort of bring what has been a very special community for me uh just yeah just just a life that that little bit more so um lovely to see a little bunch of you here I think that's absolutely fantastic <laughs> um like I, I presented this idea on my YouTube community quite a few weeks ago um and there seemed to be quite a few of you that thought it was a nice idea. There was a few of you that certainly didn't, but you know, I, I, I sort of expected that as well. Um, but like, I, I just wanted this to be super uh, chill. Um, so, but I, I don't know what you want to do. I wondered like, my, my idea originally was sort of like, if if people felt comfortable with it, if you just wanted to, just introduce yourself a little bit just like say say hello say whatever you want to say even if it's just to um put your dog's face in the camera or whatever it is but like just <laughs> uh, just to say hello um and and I guess um as well I mean I some of you say that I don't need to say this but this is also just a nice little excuse to sort of like face to face say thank you to you as well as this is um obviously sort of exclusive only for people that are supporting me on patreon or uh, are a channel member of mine on youtube so um papa fox looking oh, in. papa fox is here as well <laughs> uh good stuff good stuff that's super nice um but yeah like um it, it's one of those things when um you, you're doing something wholly online so i mean obviously even before covid19 um started doing what it's doing um what i've been doing on youtube and and patreon and twitch and all these things has of course purely been online and and all i ever see uh, of you people out there listening to the things that i make is is just a a name uh and a, and a comment and things like that um but you're always seeing me and hearing me and and things so um i've always been very fascinated with who's on the other end 
of the keyboard or the the phone or whatever and um you know it, it was quite remarkable when i first made uh, my original youtube channel and started sharing some of those chapters of the hobbit um it was so remarkable to just go from what was really just a little hunch a little random experiment um during what was quite a difficult time in my life as well um to then discover that there was people out there around the world that for whatever reason were interested in hearing me read stories and and all the rest of it um but I've always been very fascinated yeah about who you are and I've had some wonderful wonderful conversations genuinely um over the last two three years with people in the YouTube comments or in emails or in Patreon messages or you know uh, over on Discord particularly uh so I do feel like I've got to know a lot of you in in one way or another um and really do consider many many of you as as friends really which is um really really special um but you know it, it is a funny dynamic as well <laughs> like um you know it's it, it's it's a weird thing uh like the internet is, is is quite a strange thing and like being a a content creator whatever that means it is sort of a strange thing but um, i just thought this zoom idea i know some people have been driven crazy by zoom and have got like um uh, like over zoomed um with everything moving online over the last year but um for me i just i just wanted to um put it put it out there that i could try and take down the walls of um viewers and a content creator and just more um, a mingle of people that have a a common interest and just want to get to know each other a little bit better and um like my my other little idea apart from just sort of like mingling with you a little bit was to see if at some point you wanted to try and have a go at like um reading together <laughs> um you know like like uh, some people have made comparisons with listening to some of my content and um feeling like they're actually being read to by um you know by their mom or their dad or their friend or whatever like people say like oh it's like so cozy it's like sitting around a bonfire and roasting marshmallows and someone's telling a story and I, I, I've always really loved that uh sort of idea um so the sort of more professional polished audiobooks they're wonderful but the sort of cozy being read to feeling I think is um is is super nice as well so um yeah, I thought I thought this was just all part of bringing those feelings a little bit closer. Uh, so, Helena, you were saying hi, Lola and Calvin. Crystal says hello. We're Lola and Calvin. We're the children. Okay, cool. Uh, Miranda saying hello. Oh, is Har did Harry pop in? <laughs> you I'm can sorry that change your view. If you go to the top right, you can click on top right of your screen. You can change the view to see the tiled view. Because you want to see the tiled view, right? You're not seeing it right now. You're only are seeing you me speaking. I'm talking you to talk you. Yeah, I yeah. I back now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing a tiled view. Right. I'm just seeing a little panel of uh, faces up at the top. Right, you can go to the top right. Gallery there's a little, view. There's a little view button up there. Then you can choose the... The different view if you wanted to this i like yeah and then it highlights who's speaking basically yeah like it That's why yeah, i didn't that... see the cat earlier yes exactly exactly this i like this is this is better yeah cool thank you helen um i was just seeing what crystal was saying made a foxy book club house in minecraft and there's a secret portal that takes you to the booklet <laughs> that's lovely <laughs> um how who who wants to kick this off is there somebody that wants to say hello will it be the 
OG Fox fan, Lady Teresa, or Helena, Mama Fox, who would anybody like to just say hello and, and take the pressure off me for a moment? Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> Talk Look to who's me, Papa popped Fox. In. Oh, yeah. Big, the big, big guy. Fox. Big Fox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I need some water. Talk, in, introduce yourself, Papa Fox. Who are you? Papa Fox has just just has wandered he, away. He wandered back in. Okay. Uh, well, everybody knows me because my name's up, Mama Fox. Oh, Papa Fox is coming back with Harry, Steve. <laughs> right. She missed him before, so. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. It's a bit of a bit of a handful, as you can see. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. yeah. There he is. Uh, so that's Harry. Uh, 12 years old, I believe. 10. Don't push him on. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? 10. Okay. Are you 10, Harry? Yes. Oh, okay. uh, 20, yeah, 20, 10. Yeah, 2012, 2012, we got him and we estimated, yeah, 2010. Yeah, he was yeah. born in 2010 and uh, two years astray, allegedly. Mm. So he had two years out on the streets of Swinton near Rotherham in Yorkshire. And then uh, eight years of complete luxury and cuddles. Yeah. Uh, and he's a ferocious beast. Don't, don't be fooled by that friendly face. He actually looks mildly pissed. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Mama Fox and Papa Fox um, wouldn't be That's here Mama without Fox. them. <laughs> thanks for clearing that up somebody else say hello thank you for your help elena would you like to say hello can i do that can i yeah, pass sure. you, can i pass <laughs> you the the speaking cuddly toy yeah, yeah i feel a bit left out since i don't have a fox <laughs> or a don't cat. A <laughs> i don't have a fox or a cat or a pet um mm. yeah okay so yes i um live in germany but i'm South African. Um, and what else did I say? <laughs> uh, work in IT and yeah, books. like books. <laughs> this is like a rock concert for me. It's like, woo -hoo. Wow. <laughs> but, <laughs> it feels uh, like a concert. <laughs> can I, can yeah. I ask you, Helen? And, and I know I've asked, um, I've asked many of you this question, um, but maybe it's a nice thing as we do have we have one common interest that we generally like books i mean if you don't like books i don't want to know you to be honest but like we like books uh things that have come from books you know films tv shows and things like that that tie in this uh storytelling narrative we like to be told good stories and obviously the other thing that ties us together weirdly is me um so how, Helena, if I can pass you the cuddly fox bag. Pick up um, the extra. <laughs> I, like, I wish we actually could virtually do that. I think it would be quite fun. Like Teresa was saying, like, oh, you know, raise your hand. And I totally understand that. But like, I, I wish we all had one of these foxes. And then I could sort of like pa pass you down the, the fox. But uh, Helena, how did you um, discover yeah, my channel? Do you remember which video you found or it must have been the secret garden um there was a time when i was looking for audiobooks um i didn't feel like paying for audible so <laughs> after my free subscription ran out i was like yeah okay <laughs> look for free audiobooks um and and then i found like okay youtube has some audiobooks and uh that's when i i kind of i think i listened to like the anne of green gables things mm. there for a while I, I don't know if it was library voice i don't know anyway i, I kind of just try to find things to listen to and somewhere there along the line by accident i don't know how i found the secret garden so yeah that's that's that <laughs> since oh. i heard that i was like okay yeah need to hear more because um after i'd already listened to some of the other audiobooks that were out there yeah they weren't they're not that good <laughs> so yeah mm. 
And you've you've used uh, Audible yourself, then, so you are more familiar with uh, quite a lot of professional narrators and things. Yeah, I don't. Okay, Audible. I don't like the model that I can like buy a book and then I have to keep the book and I can't give the book away and I can't. I mean, I can give it back, but it's not. Yes, eventually they stop you from doing that. Mm. So I I want a library ideally, and I don't want to pay that much in the end for a book. Mm. So um. And even some of the Audible books, they're read in a very boring way. I really prefer this kind of more like a real reading, like it sounds like a real, <laughs> doesn't sound like a computer voice, even though it's a real person reading. I don't like that, like, stripped down style, really. Um, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. A lot of a lot of people say that. And that was actually what put me off some audiobooks in the first place myself, like when I was a teenager um the, there was there were certain things that stood out uh certain narrators um but it, it but it felt like th th it was very common for people to really like you're saying sort of like flatten out their voice and and I, I mean i understand that perhaps there was an idea to try and keep things as neutral as possible and and perhaps they thought that listeners would be able to better um create their own images or something but at the end of the day if you've got a voice glued in your ears um i feel like you do need some assistance from them otherwise a dull monotonous voice could actually distract you from the whole thing right and and maybe yeah. help to you know dull dull the whole experience you know because it, it's not like you can really simultaneously create your own character voices while someone's going yes and then they went here and did this thing and yeah and th there was a common trait I think as well to have um rather posh uh elderly British gentlemen reading audiobooks as well and they just all sound like the me. same <laughs> like you <clears throat> yes I, I know precisely what you mean when in that regard Stephen exactly <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, Steven, our, yeah. my kids listen to audiobooks a lot in order to access literature and um they they turn off other audiobooks all the time because they're mm. bored and they mm. say that they're they're just flat um and that's why we have you guys have been listening to this channel for months now yeah, like consistently um they learn use learning which is a subscription for um, kids that qualify, at least in the United States, for special education. And so we pay $100 a year for audiobooks that are read by volunteers. And mm -hmm. boy, <laughs> it's, I mean, because they're volunteers, they're just other parents who, they're um, and they're just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're all right, but we really appreciate that there's someone who puts so much into the story and into the characters. Where's the box again? No, that's, so that's the audio very... books that I've listened to on Audible are like having nails scraped down a chalkboard. They're so awful. Mm -hmm. And I really wish that we could just get Steven to do all of our books and that he could actually do all of them. <laughs> well, I think Audible. we had said um, last time we were chatting that we listened to the Tim Curry um, Christmas Carol and it's we're bad. really disappointed because, you know, he's a he's a voice actor and yeah, I was really surprised so um it's such a different style I was glad to hear you talk about why they might be like that mm. the official yeah, I, audiobooks I, of the boy that must not be named are <laughs> atrocious I mean some people some people really love them um I mean I must admit that Stephen Fry was one of um one of those that stood out to me somewhat as a as a teenager I mean Yes, he's very middle-aged, white, posh <laughs> male. Is he Cambridge educated or Oxford Cambridge? Uh, I, I forget which. Mm -hmm. um, but he really fits the model. Um, but he does, I feel like he does bring some personality and warmth uh, to his reading as well. Um, and I mean, Jim Dale, um, the other famous official narrator of Harry Potter I mean he um 
he seems to be much loved uh well at least if you look at reviews online you know like both of them are really like five star rated um and then when i started producing those little harry potter chapters oh, no, no, uh, those few years ago i mean well, yeah that's what it does what, what was that sorry crystal Oh, I'm sorry. We forgot to mute ourselves here. Oh, don't don't worry at all. Don't worry at all. Um, but uh, yeah, I I started recording Harry Potter, and um, I, I mean, I was approaching it very casually. I mean, yeah, I wanted it to be cozy, but I was literally just trying to sort of lift the book off the shelf, open it up, and read to you as if I was reading to children um because like you know I used to work in schools and I was pursuing a career in teaching uh I didn't think that it was my uh god-given gift or anything and that I was going to be a teacher I'd, I'd had all sorts of different careers in mind um but I had quite a bumpy ride uh sort of late teens going into my 20s and uh teaching uh, you know, my father's been a teacher for very many years and teaching just seemed a natural thing to go into. Um, one of the aspects of teaching small children that I loved was reading stories to them, as you can probably imagine. And um, when I was working in a British uh, international primary school in Stockholm, Sweden, the, there was a lovely librarian that worked there and she let me take the class sometimes and read stories to the to the children and uh i thought it was really wonderful like um dad had been um i know both mum and dad had read stories stories to me as a child but uh dad had been an inspiration with the reading to children aspect because he'd done that with such flair and and like energy and and love and everything when reading to his uh, primary school children so then when i was in that similar setting um it was quite surreal really to see like 20 little faces looking up at you and seemingly absolutely captivated in what you're doing and then not only that but actually having the sort of uh, reassurance from uh, a teacher uh, and a very experienced teacher saying, um, you know what, student, that was absolutely lovely. Like, it was such a pleasure to watch you uh, reading to the to the children. It just sort of, I guess, confirmed something uh, in me a little bit. Um, and then, um, I mean, I, I've talked a little bit about like how I got into to this in the first place. Um, but I guess what sort of naturally came to me was this, um, feeling of keeping it real, um, you know, just, just, um, just reading the book <laughs> out aloud and it didn't really feel like it mattered so much to me, um, uh, like how precisely everything was done uh like how amazing the equipment was or the editing or the the environment i mean I, like i didn't have anything available when i first just started experimenting so i just thought this is fun like this is relaxing like just um you know i'm sure mum and dad will remember when i was sat in the bedroom upstairs like you know uh and i and i just like literally like just put my mobile phone there on my knee and opened uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox and then a few days later um, The Hobbit and I'd experimented with a couple of other things a few months previously and and literally just uh, read it out of the book for the first time fresh like I, I wish I could allow myself to approach making audiobooks like that more often because um, now I've got sort of two aware of the whole process if you, if you know what I mean so I do try to do that and the book clubs the live the live streams on YouTube and things are um, the closest that I get to that sometimes of literally just picking it up and reading 
but now I, I do like I've got very aware of uh, of how to edit, how to create a good audio environment. Um, and you, you look at things with a less innocent gaze, um, I suppose. Um, if I can, if I can just uh, throw it back to the room, Teresa, would you like to introduce yourself just a little bit? Because you're uh, a you're a big fan for a long time. Long time. I remember the first time I discovered your videos, I was cleaning my room and wanted to listen to someone read me Harry Potter. I think that was way back in almost 2016. Um, but I live in Canada in the land of the snow. <laughs> That's the backyard. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Definitely. It was minus 26 degrees Celsius last night when I was sleeping. So I had to put on a sweater on top of my blankets. Holy moly. <laughs> um, I work full time for a communications company. Um, and in my spare time, I work what is amounting to look like a second full time job in politics and use a lot of Stephen's readings to keep me from going crazy or to help me fall asleep when I've had a bad day. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely, Teresa. That's really nice. Um, did we did we first speak um, via a platform that I can't even remember the name of now that, that they stopped using? I don't Do you know what I'm talking that. about? No. Um, I was thinking that because you've been following obviously since the uh, original channel since since the since the original channel so like i'm i'm on my third youtube channel now because i've been causing such a stir <laughs> no the... because you're better than everybody else well I, i've i've uh yeah like if you don't know like uh for anybody that doesn't know like i've had two channels closed down for copyright infringements um i'm just a i'm just a renegade um so yeah Teresa found me on the original uh channel which was just called Stephen Garnett and um there was a platform that um is now defunct that I can't remember the name of and um when I was losing my original channel I was trying to use that as a bit of a bailout so I'm sure you would Remember, I thought you would remember. No, the... you found me in the comments of your original channel before it shut down to tell me to move to the new one. Ah, right. Okay. It was only yeah. ever that and email before Discord came along. Ah, right, right, right. Yeah, because I I know that was. Uh, you've you've mentioned that was the first time that someone had sort of like reached out to you, but I wasn't a YouTuber sure. YouTuber that, that I followed, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. The one exactly. and only, actually. No one else really? has reached out to me. Still, yeah. still to this day. Yeah. That's remarkable, that I think. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't even remember what there was like a, a platform run by, I can't remember if it was run by Microsoft or Google or something. It, you, you know, it was like, it wasn't MSN, but there was like some other platform that. Skype? No, it wasn't. It wasn't Skype, but it was like um, a bit like, uh, like a. Um, uh, like a MySpace sort of thing, but it wasn't MySpace. Um, that that they closed down like about eighteen months ago or something. Oh, uh, but it... yes, I know what you're talking about. It's via Google. This sounds promising. <laughs> but I was Google using Spaces. Wasn't it Spaces? No. No, not Spaces. <laughs> but it was but... it was Google trying to get into the Facebook game. It was that sort of thing. It was that sort of thing. Um, so I, when when I was worried about losing my original channel, um, I uh, tried to bail people over to there. You see, at least to just keep in contact. It was sort. I, I thought it was an easier way of trying to make a sort of mailing list. So if uh, the channel got closed down and I lost all my subscribers. Uh, it was just like a little hope that I could at least try and hang on to a few of you and say, hello, please come and find me somewhere on the new channel. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the, I wasn't sure if that was when we'd first chatted, but I know we'd obviously emailed and like uh, in comments and, and all the rest of it. And you joined onto Patreon and, um, and all those sorts of things. It's going to drive 
me crazy if I can't figure out what oh, that there was there it called. is. Miranda said it's Google Plus. Google Plus, that was it. Screaming, yeah. yeah coming, it screaming was, back to me now. Yes, yeah. yes. It was that simple. It was that simple. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for maintaining my sanity, Miranda. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, that's the one. And they uh, they closed it some time ago. They thought it was rubbish. Um, but it, it just served uh, its purpose momentarily. And um, it happened that I didn't lose the channel. Uh, this was because of Pottermore, uh, who would, um, I think, automatically uh, using some sort of uh, robo algorithm had uh, found my Harry Potter book one and a few chapters of book two and had um, uh, sent me like nine copyright takedown notices. Um, but after chatting with them, they they actually uh, removed the the strikes um but um there were some issues later on with a different company <laughs> and then i first experimented with live streaming and that was like my my hope then was that if cuz i cuz if if you get copyright strikes if you get three copyright strikes you can't upload new videos so even like whilst you're trying to resolve the issue you can't actually make new content but the little loophole that I found was that you could still start a live stream. And I'd never done any live streaming before. So I didn't know what the flipping hell I was doing. And I I didn't have a, a webcam or anything either. Um, and also my ex-girlfriend didn't want me to go on webcam anyway, because she was worried that uh, one of you would steal my heart and take me off to some foreign country and she'd never see me again. Um, so I never used webcam, uh, regardless. Uh, but I did figure out how to do desktop capture. Um, and so just captured the screen with something on there and got myself in the chat. And I was just sort of like, hello, everybody. My channel's going to get closed down. Um, how about Patreon? <laughs> Um, you could follow me over there and uh, it was looking at the time that I was actually going to be able to uh, make a little bit of revenue from advertising, um, which was very, very promising, but that was all going to get removed as well. And it felt like I was just going to have to start all over again, which felt very tragic to say the least. Um, Cause this, this whole thing was very special to me very early on. And um amazingly about a hundred of you joined me on patreon within about 48 hours of me uh setting that up which was uh, rather mind-blowing um and although i did then lose that original channel that was the ultimate sort of confirmation for me that i must be doing something right like if a if hundred people were willing to throw a dollar five dollars twenty dollars whatever at me a moment's notice just because they sort of wanted to cheer and say hey don't worry we we you know we we want to be a part of your community we want to listen to your things we want to see you uh yeah. oh, make make more of this stuff or yeah. become a professional narrator mm -hmm. or, or whatever it is you want to do you know um that was just uh absolutely mind-blowing so mm -hmm um yeah <laughs> like thank you because i i don't i don't know if you really realize like how much these things matter um i know we, we're, we're so drowned in content creators and youtube channels and instagram thingies and influencers and everything it's um i've sort of I've, I've sort of forgotten what it's like on the other side, if you know what I mean. It's like, um, it, like those people, they really do care, if, if you know what I'm saying. Um, it's really amazing to, to have people out there commenting on things that you do, uh, wanting to pledge support. It's It's just really... It's just really amazing. Um, hello, Kato. <laughs> hello. You just popped in. Um, 
thank you uh, for introducing yourself there a little bit, Teresa. Um, would somebody else like to say hello? Because I'm doing a lot of talking. I, I have a habit of that. <laughs> say hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Um, I was I was wondering if somebody else would um, say hello my name is um, I found your channel by watching this video and I thought it was good and that's why I'm here I really <laughs> like the Lord of the Rings who's speaking oh this Calvin Calvin yeah. Ah, cheers, Calvin. Which, yeah, we really uh, like Lord of the Rings. That's how we found you. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah, I, Tom I was Bombadil. Yes, they love Tom Bombadil. Hmm. And Stephen, they love your songs. Yeah. They sing the songs all about the house. <laughs> <laughs> I hear, oh. I hear about Tom Bombadil <clears throat> so often. I just hear that tune waltzing through the house. It's lovely. You're. Uh, I was really impressed with the music. I can't write a tune, <laughs> so. <laughs> That's really sweet. Uh, and that was actually something I was really self-conscious about when I uh, first started playing with the with the songs because you can't avoid it, really. Um, like, <laughs> did you did you listen to my Hobbit? Yes, um, I did. Yeah. Yeah, because because that um, you know one of the first things that I'd ever played around with, uh, like I was saying earlier, like I I literally was just reading out of the book and hoping for the best. Um, I obviously I knew the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings was full of poems and uh, and whatnot, little songs and things, but I didn't have a clue how I was going to approach it. I a little part of me just thought, well, at the end of the day, I can always just read them it'll be fine and uh and i wasn't editing anything at the time when i was recording the hobbit it was just um literally what came uh came um i i, I can't really emphasize enough how little i knew about editing when i started this um so i was just trying to read as much as i could in one go without making a mistake because <laughs> i knew that the mistake would be there forever <laughs> so um so the first time I opened the Hobbit and started uh talking into my phone I I managed 45 minutes without a mistake and um stumbled over a word 45 minutes in and was like oh shit okay so I like stopped the recording uh and then started a new one and I, I was like okay I don't really know what I'm going to do there but that was an error so I'll just do it again um, and just continued from that point. Um, but then realized that I didn't have a clue what software to use, how to use these things or anything. So I just thought, you know what, we'll forget about editing. It's fine. I'll, if, if I make a mistake, it'll just add to the very like raw nature of it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I am literally just reading this story to you. But then um, near the end of uh, chapter one, there's the infamous um far over the misty mountains uh, song uh, sung by thorin and company and uh hello shannon i recognize your face <laughs> <laughs> and um uh, i was like ooh this is going to sound a bit rubbish so i think it was probably like uh, i probably took a brief pause because it is quite a long chapter that first chapter in the hobbit and i looked at the at the lyrics of that uh, of that song um and like i don't really know where those things come from like i'm absolutely no songwriter um i'm no poet uh, or musician um and i sometimes i've got to really praise the the writing of Tolkien I know it sounds a bit cheesy but like I've got to give credit to his ability to construct those poems and um it's not only the structure of the poems that does a lot but it's the 
the context, like the the purpose of those poems. Because I know Mama Fox, you admitted a long time ago that you were one of those that generally skimmed over the the songs in in mm. The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings. And I know that's a very common thing that people do. They're sort of like, blah, 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 blah. What? See you later. Back to the action. Um, and, and some people have commented like they'd never really appreciated the songs. Um, they might have heard a nice rendition of one done with music and things like that on YouTube or a professional one or something. But actually within the context of the story, sort of like, oh, what's... I wish Tolkien had stopped driveling on with these silly, silly poems and get back to the fun stuff, you know. Um, but I, I realised, or in my opinion, that they actually add an awful lot to the story, that you, you really get a, an awful lot of feeling from the characters and they often sort of um, expose some broader element of the, of the storytelling, you know. Um, and with the Dwarfen song at the end of chapter one, um i i could just so picture it it felt so vivid and um i think it was such a clever idea of talking to in, to to uh, uh incorporate all these songs because again it, it so fits the sort of feeling of the time this sort of uh fantasy medieval setting you know so telling songs being the little bard there and the ding da, da, ding 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 and like traveling the country and spreading the um the 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 lays of the land and everything um was so integral you know we we did just tell stories through uh songs and like nursery rhymes and all these things uh and they they were saved in our memories through probably catchy tunes and exciting things you know and i could just so picture that um with thorin and company uh, singing of their long lost gold and their abandoned home, you know, the, these real refugees, you know. Um, and I just thought, I've got to try and do this justice a little bit. I've got to do something. I, I can't just read it. That's going to kill the mood, you know. And so as each one came, I just read them a couple of times and <laughs> some sort of tune uh, came out and uh, then when we got to Lord of the Rings quite a bit of time later um, I still had absolutely no confidence in my singing ability whatsoever but felt that they, they were sort of working and uh, there was some really nice comments uh, back then when I was uh, making uh, these first Lord of the Rings chapters that were quite confirming you know saying like Oh, the song with the elves, I think it's in chapter three of the first book. Oh, that was really lovely. Like, I felt I was there with the elves sort of thing. I was like, okay, yeah, okay. So, so some things, you know, some things working here. And then by the time we got to Tom Bombadil, I mean, that man is a maniac. And, you know, he's singing and dancing wherever he goes. And I thought, okay, well... If you don't give jolly old Tom Bombadil a good song, then you might as well just hang up your microphone and call it a day, you know. Uh, and I had a lot of fun <laughs> with <laughs> with the Tom Bombadil songs. I, I I thought they were just absolutely bananas, um, but just loved it. And I could just so picture him <laughs> like through the woods, you know. And he's just he's such a peculiar character and. Um, to be honest, like I've never been so um, well read in the deep lore of Middle Earth and Tolkien and all these sorts of things. So uh, I'm just sort of interpreting things as I feel, you know what I mean, in, in the moment. And I do read around a little bit and research things here and there, particularly um, into the second book and into the third book. I was doing that more and more. But uh, but then I was just sort of like, okay, I don't actually know anything about Tom Bombadil, but I'm guessing there's more than meets the eye. You know, he's not just some drunken man in the forest. Like he, he's probably a, a spirit of some kind, a, a god almost, like something very peculiar. And I was sort of like, um, 
pleasantly surprised when we got to the Council of Elrond in the second book and they discussed Tom Bombadil just very briefly there and they're saying sort of like, whoa, that, you know, um, we can't give Tom the ring because he wouldn't even understand what it was. He'd probably just throw it in the river. And um, But they also very much knew the legend of Tom Bombadil and that that council is, of course, comprised of arguably the most important people in free middle earth you know so it was like uh, the united nations are meeting to discuss something of incredible importance and tom bombadil gets an honorable mention um and also the fact that he is timeless and very strange <laughs> uh so it just helped to sort of confirm in my mind like okay he he really is almost like a because i saw him as like a sort of father time um and that uh goldberry was sort of a mother nature almost you know they were just these magical spirits sort of living deep in this incredibly ancient magical forest with living trees you know that the ants are also aware of and it, it just all ties in so so wonderfully i think well and uh, i hadn't yeah. i had read the lord of the rings once and I, now i realize i have a reading disability and so i was actually able to enjoy it by just listening to an audiobook and i'm 40 and it took me this many years to embrace you know audiobooks as a way of absorbing literature that's just as valid as reading it and that might sound funny to somebody who maybe doesn't have a learning challenge but um being being able to just sit back and enjoy literature again has been so nice because I realized that I hadn't been absorbing the stories before I was just kind of getting through them um so I think that's what I really appreciated about going through those first three books or two and a half books of um, Lord of the Rings was that I actually got to enjoy reading it and enjoy characters like Tom Bombadil to the fullest or listen again without being fatigued, you know? Um, so that's why I think we've really enjoyed finding your channel is that I can just, we can sit back and relax. <laughs> we don't have the, the struggle of getting through the heavy language of Tolkien or the long passages. Yeah, that's that's really really nice, Crystal. And um, you're you're certainly um, not uh, in the minority there at all. That is, um, uh, there are a lot of people actually surprisingly that, that comment uh, along the same lines, like whether it's um, um, difficulties in concentration, uh, so like certain ways of. Um, struggling in one way or another mm -hmm. to sort of engage with books and mm -hmm. and the like you know um mm -hmm. and uh some people maybe with um issues with sight as well you know it, it is very common this that sort of like um uh, people are sort of hoping to use audiobooks as a way into literature they find it sort of difficult mm -hmm. and then there was like something about uh my presentation or something you know that that sort of ticked those boxes and they were sort of like oh okay i i can enjoy something that i felt like i couldn't enjoy that's very um liberating um and it was a common one with tolkien i think a lot of people do struggle with tolkien i mean um uh you know you you could say that it's quite dry in in places like i i think um uh you know, sometimes there's a, there's a couple of pages of... Um, there's a lot of description of the landscape. <laughs> that's that's exactly what I was going to say. That is exactly what yeah. I was going to say. Like, you can you're have a couple of... You're going around a bend, you're going around another bend. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That's what I was trying to say. Like, a couple of pages of description of forest or hills or... Mm -hmm. And that could get pretty boring. <laughs> um, and he loves his monologues as well. Uh, so I can imagine people really switching off when reading uh, those as well. Just someone driveling on about some old history or, or whatever it is. And you just sort of like, you know, I think a lot of people that grew up 
with the Lord of the Rings movies, as in the Peter Jackson uh, films, um, have then gone to the Lord of the Rings books at some point and sort of were like, where are the sword fights? Like, where where's all the things exploding? Um, and, it, you know, it, I, I do like the Peter Jackson films, and especially as I was a kid myself when they came out, they, they're going to have affected me differently than if they were released now. I, I, I might have dismissed them a little bit more now than I, I would have done when I was 13 or so. Um, but they do capture many elements of that world and they're very beautifully constructed in many ways and there's some fantastic acting performances um but there are certain elements of uh tolkien's writing that i don't think uh are captured and um yeah hopefully if read well if i if i may say so like no but, no, but like they they you you sort of get where he was going you know i feel like you need to delve into into his mind mm -hmm. uh, and sort of like okay what's he influenced by what's he trying to say here you know um and it is a very magical a very very magical world that he creates and i i do think there's some uh overlapping themes with the secret garden and the lord of the rings like both of those authors were clearly extremely appreciative of nature and uh the sort of simple things in life you know, they could both, uh, Francis Hodgson Burnett and uh, Tolkien, can have a jolly good time just in, in you know, they, they, they can just talk about what you had for breakfast, uh, the feeling of the soft grass under your bottom when you sit down for a picnic or whatever. You know, like, they're both obviously very privileged people um, and yet... Um, are very aware of, of um, for me, very significant things, which is just, you know, um, not taking things for granted. Yeah, yeah, like, I, you know, <laughs> the, the world we live on, uh, the, the nature that, that supports uh, the, the world and the balance between all these factors and that we're just a little drop in the ocean, um, whether on a... Uh, a timeline you know going hundreds and thousands of years back or literally just here and now we are just one little drop of a much bigger picture so i i very much like the the sort of worlds that both of those authors create if you know what i'm saying um harry potter um if i can just switch up i'm just curious like um because kato has joined shannon's joined um do you i was i was just hoping to like ask a little bit about um sort of what you think about different books and and things uh, that i obviously it helps if it's something that i've uh, narrated um and then we've got that thing in common but um that's one thing that I can't really do on a on a book club live stream on YouTube is obviously like I try to engage with the chat as much as possible, but it's very difficult to have a discussion. You know, I get very aware <laughs> that um, I'm, I'm just like sat looking at the camera and there's just a list of names like scrolling by. It's sort of uh, it's a it's a it's a one sided dynamic in that regard. Um, but um, like do like can i just ask a question just for the fun of it like do, do you feel that uh jk rowling for example do you think she um creates um as vivid a world as um as tolkien for example i just thought it'd be fun because they're the, they're my t oh and, and if i can mention c.s lewis as well because those three um books are the are like my most uh, viewed uh, content. All three of them no longer exist on my channel, which is fun. But um, those three are the most common things that have brought people to my channel. Secret Garden uh, as well, uh, but Harry Potter, uh, Narnia. May I speak, Stephen? Go ahead, Papa Fox. Yeah. Um, I hadn't realised how good a writer J.K. Rowling was until I listened to you read her work. You, you, you really captured the, the breadth and depth of a, 
of the capabilities. I, I'm, I, I was never a fan of J.K. Rowling. When I first read her books, all I could see was all these other authors that she copied from and thought she could, she could write a good plot. Uh, and obviously uh, her, her dialogue was good. But you really, for me, you really brought it to life uh, and took it to a, another level. Uh, you know, I, th I think Potty Moore, or whatever they're called, uh, ought to be ashamed of themselves for, for, for not allowing you to read their work better than anybody else I've ever, ever read. I mean, obviously, I'm your dad, so I'm biased, but, you know, I can see... I know talent when I see it, and uh, I, I really appreciate your... Uh, a bit. I, w when I first listened to Dracula, uh, and uh, I, I'm sitting there and I'm finding it hard to believe that there's only one person because you seem to uh, capture all these different... You don't just do the voices, you find the personalities as well. Um, it's just uh, quite incredible, really. Right, I'm but shutting I, up now. I shall put uh, but down no, the but I, uh, I was uh, thinking of, of you, Pepper Fox, and I know there's other people out there as well that, um, of course, like uh, J.K. Rowling and the whole world of Harry Potter is um, much, 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 much loved. Um, when I started reading the Harry Potter books, I don't think I actually even realised just how huge that community was out there like you know I knew Harry Potter was big obviously but um I I never imagined that some uh rather you know if I if I can just say like rather amateurish readings particularly in the be beginning with uh, Harry Potter would um attract so much attention on YouTube and um Obviously, I'm very aware that those were unofficial and uh, free and, and with it being copyright protected, that is why there are very few uh, free unofficial things out there. So, of course, um, it's basically it's easier to get noticed uh, producing something that is I had I knew I knew nothing about copyright when I started this uh disclaimer but like it's obviously easier to get noticed doing something that's copyright protected and super famous and still relevant than it is um although very famous something that's 150 years old out of fashion and can uh, legally be produced by anybody um so I'm aware that that's why a lot of people got drawn to um, Harry Potter, for example. But then when the comments started rolling in um, from, from so many people all around the world, I, I was just really like, people love Harry Potter. I mean, it's like I knew the films like were massive, the books, I know they were all bestsellers and everything, but I couldn't just believe like that. It, like some people will read Harry Potter and nothing else. Like that is basically the only book they have ever read. Like they've just read all the Harry Potters 15 times over. Um, and I think Harry Potter must be somewhat unique in that. I, I, I've i never come across another series where, you know, cause there are absolute huge uh, Tolkien fanatics. Uh, but I, I feel that, um, I, I don't think I've come across that phenomenon with anything else. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like that, that you can just be so into Harry Potter that that is basically the only thing that you want to, to consume. Um, and I was a little bit worried when, um, when my Harry Potter stuff was getting taken down as well, because um, a, a, a quite a few people were sort of saying, okay, well, I was just here for Harry Potter. See you later. Um, <laughs> Because people are oh, just, um, <laughs> well, yeah, um, I mean, a few people did say that after Lord of the Rings as well, but it was definitely more common with Harry Potter that it was sort of like Harry Potter or nothing. Um, but um, yeah, Papa Fox, I was thinking of you because you were one of those that were not in the fanatic camp by any means. You know, you, you'd never been um, uh, 
exactly like singing the praises of of rolling or anything like that um and i and i i felt like i knew you know just growing up and into my 20s and everything i felt like i knew as many people that really were quite damning of harry potter as i knew that were really into harry potter um but uh, yeah you've been pleasantly surprised haven't you like when you've been listening to some of my recordings you were you were saying like oh wow actually she's um she she builds a a good world you know what i mean that she she's a good character developer uh it's very vibrant very believable engaging and all the rest um but uh like yeah i, I was gonna say like i i still um i i still feel that uh I don't know. I, I, every, everybody's walking on the shoulders of other people, uh, but I like. I can't imagine rolling without so many other writers before her. As as someone like Tolkien, I feel um, was groundbreaking on a on a different level. If if you know what I'm saying. Um, can I just say hello to Lady Bookworm? You've you've popped in. <laughs> hello very nice to see you lynette uh, hello. hello i was i was hanging around here just uh with the with the camera off yeah yeah grabbing grabbing some caffeine <laughs> yes <laughs> good stuff oh very nice to see you um would you like to I'm sorry for putting you on the spot. Would you like to just briefly <laughs> introduce yourself and say, like, how did you find the channel and those things? It's just a nice way of mingling a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I had this time when I was uh, taking some time off of work. And I thought I'd get back into reading because I hadn't been reading anything in English for a while. So I think I found your channel through one of the Harry Potter books probably the last one because I hadn't read that. So I looked, I looked online for on YouTube for Harry Potter. And I think I found uh, some rather monotonic uh, readings. I think somebody had just put something up that was read by a bot or something. It was mm -hmm. horrible. Mm. But uh, then I found uh, that you had read the first book, The mm. Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah, that one. And then I kind of found The Hobbit after that. And I really liked that one. <laughs> and I think uh, I really didn't... I have this um, prejudice against, I think, uh, all these major books that get turned into movies. So I hadn't I hadn't uh, read the Lord of the Rings up until then, and I hadn't watched the movies either. Mm. So after the Hobbit, I just decided to take the plunge, you know, because mm. if uh, because you made it really interesting. Well, that's lovely. And, Thank you, Lena. Yeah, and, and I think that was why I decided to take the leap into the Lord of the Rings, and that was one amazing, you know gem to be found <laughs> i was like ah, i was wondering how i went through life for so long without you know coming across this book and reading it and probably pish poshing everybody who asked me to read it before that <laughs> <laughs> and That's but i think the thing that got me hooked was secret garden again okay mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the lovely accent and the lovely story. I think it's something that, you know, pulls people in the story and your uh, your narration with the with the Yorkshire accent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was so lovely. <laughs> yeah, I think that's when I decided I should, you know, probably be paying for this stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's that's so I, yeah, that that was when I uh, I think got off of YouTube and went to Patreon and downloaded that. That's that's really that's really great. Can can I just ask? Um, mm -hmm. um, 
th this is to anybody. Thank you so much, Lynette. Um, what what do you think of Patreon as a platform? Um, like, do you? Because I think I think you all use Patreon. Am I right? Is anybody that's only a no. channel member? Yeah, I'm just a channel member. I oh, don't are, know why I haven't. I don't have a Patreon. I've never logged in there. I've. I just. I have no idea why I haven't ever. <laughs> Since I don't know. <laughs> I, Shame on you. <laughs> I have no idea why. I just I don't know. So when the join button came up on YouTube, I was like, yeah, okay, it's right here. <laughs> yeah, it's super convenient. I don't it's know. Really easy. I don't I don't I don't understand. I always think I think maybe I should check it out. I just yeah. don't I don't know why. Go on, explain fair, it. Fair play. I like um I didn't really know what to do with the channel member thing, but um I've um I've had a lot of issues with um, uh, monetizing my YouTube channel channels. Uh, so most of the time, still, I think um, I've had more time on YouTube without any revenue uh, aspect than with. Um, so um, obviously, if you're dedicating a lot of time into something, it, it is sort of nice to have a, a little bit of something uh, coming back like not just the the warmth of the of the listeners which is obviously like a flipping huge thing but um of course like i was sort of thinking um you know especially as i have had quite a bumpy uh a bumpy life uh, here and there i i thought okay if i if i can make this um a thing then that would be fantastic and you you of course um uh need to make revenue and uh, so patreon when that came about like i said um well there was like a few uh quiet months in the beginning and then there was this big boom when i said like about 100 people jumped over in a couple of days which was which was remarkable and it's been um uh, an incredible source of support ever since um so that's like two and a half years ago um but with patreon i felt like um okay i shouldn't feel guilty about this because i've always had a strange feeling with uh like i don't know why i feel awkward about I, like i'm no businessman you know what i mean i'm not very comfortable in sort of like uh selling selling myself or selling a product or uh, trying to like encourage people to oh please throw me your money I, i've always just felt very odd about the whole thing um but think it's absolutely incredible as well and i've just tried to trust that those of you that join on patreon and continue to pledge that pledge you're doing it because you want to do it right <laughs> I know it sounds really silly, but it's just like even we're doing it because you're fantastic at what you do, and we want to enable you to keep doing it. Cheers, Thank you. Yeah, we, I would be very sad if, for some reason, there was never ever again like another chapter or something. That would be very depressing. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, one of the biggest heights, bits of anxiety that I had before you know the pandemic hit was when we thought they were going to destroy your patreon and we i thought that you were going to have to go and get a like a legit full-time job and we were going to lose what you do it was one of the most depressing times that i've had in a long time i was just going to rob a bank teresa to be honest <laughs> you don't really need to worry about that i'm sorry i thought what you had was a legit full-time job <laughs> <laughs> well yeah by the world standard not by our standard <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think in um, ten years' time, I'll feel more comfortable with it. Um, but you know, like the, the the world is sort of embracing this sort of concept, this um, you know, online digital way of uh, of making cash. Um, but uh, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like it is a very new concept. Like. Um, I still don't really see myself as a YouTuber. I don't really know what I am, but I I like making stuff and uh, quite a few people out there enjoy the stuff that I make and I'm trying to make sure that I do everything above board. You know, I know that I've been um, 
uh, going into grey territory and, uh, you know, originally it was completely accidental and then became less accidental. Uh, so I suppose I had it coming in the end, like with um, the Tolkien estate suddenly knocking on my door and taking my television. I've, I don't even own a television, actually. No, but they did. Um, they they came in hard. Um, but, you know, I guess I had, although they never gave me a warning, I did have warnings from elsewhere. And uh, I just innocently thought, I, I wonder if the Tolkien estate is actually just really relaxed over these things because there's loads of different versions of Tolkien and the Hobbit on YouTube and things and I'd had my my uh you know crude version of the Hobbit on YouTube for a very long time with no issues so even though I'd lost those two channels I'd had the Hobbit on both of those original channels with no issue so I thought yeah, but I Steve, and all the other ratchet copies sucked and yours no, didn't but there, there are which is why they came from you. You're very kind, Teresa, but there are some, there are some very good quality uh, versions out there as well. Like particularly not as good of, as yours. Okay, but of the, <laughs> of the of the Hobbit and of um, the Lord of the Rings, like there's um, there's some very high quality versions out there. Harry Potter, not so much. No, but no, but uh, the Hobbit. There's an there's an extremely good version out there, if not a couple. Um, and uh, Lord of the Rings, absolutely some very well done unofficial versions uh, and I'd heard rumors of uh, some issues many years ago with a particular amateur version of uh, I shouldn't call it amateur you know unofficial version of Lord of the Rings on YouTube but this was many years ago and uh, the the guy that had produced it Phil Dragash who's a very talented man he'd um, launched that using music from the Peter Jackson movies and uh, quite soon after those movies had been released so I just thought okay maybe they got struck off because of the music as much as anything and because they were you know directly contending with the films but perhaps in general the Tolkien estates sort of kind of relaxed and you know they're there making their cash their chill it's fine um, but they weren't, they weren't fine at all. Uh, so I, I think they could live with um, that little hole in their pocket sids, dropping out <laughs> the, uh, the 10,000 pounds, if that was the case. Or you could also, of course, see it as, um, you know, when there's uh, people such as Crystal uh, and, and various others out there that are saying, Oh, you know what? I'd I'd never actually enjoyed the Lord of the Rings books before, and now I've bought a hardback copy of the whole thing, and I've watched all the movies. And but you you know what I'm saying? Like you can be an ambassador for for the series. You're not just there to try and mine away at their pension fund. You know, um, and and that was my that was the thing. Like when um, when I first started this, I've said this many times. It was more of a a therapy for myself as much as anything. I found it incredibly uh, relaxing and weirdly rewarding. Uh, and that was me just reading to myself before I'd even put anything on YouTube. I was, I was, <laughs> I could have just stayed in my bedroom and, and just read stories to myself and been very entertained. But um, no, but like when I started putting things on YouTube, um, th there was a little part of me that because before I was aware of mechanical copyright and that reading a book out aloud and sharing it online was a punishable offence. Um, I <laughs> There was just a tiny part of me, uh, especially when these first few like really lovely comments came in and a few people joined me on Patreon really early on, um, like Angel Harper, who's uh, been a patron of mine for an incredibly long time, um, and if I, if I'm not mixing up my Canadians, she, she was a, or is a, uh, teacher. Um, and she'd been sharing some of my first Harry Potter chapters, I think with her class or something. Um, and she just said, it was like, this is one of the most lovely things I've ever heard. 
I, I want everybody to hit listen to it. And I just thought, okay, if there's like one random person out there or 10 random people or a hundred random people or a thousand random people that um, like something about uh, my style of reading stories, um, what if some writer or an agent or something was to bump into one of my videos and and say uh, good afternoon there so would you be kind enough to join us at penguin and read our latest stories but in, <laughs> instead they just came and said get that off get that off stop it go back to you know go back to your day job uh, so it's funny like my the innocent part of my brain was actually sort of thinking like oh if if people around the world are finding this and enjoying it what if I actually sort of get signed you know because because that's what people do with YouTube as well like I'm sure a number of you watch uh various music artists like you know musicians and all the rest of it are on YouTube and a lot of those people they started just doing covers of songs that they liked putting them on their YouTube channel uh getting following getting support and actually getting signed. Uh, so I sort of just naively thought like, hmm, I wonder if it could be like that, um, with uh, you know, for a, for a voice actor or a narrator or whatever, but uh, those worlds are a little bit different, it seems. Um, Shannon, <laughs> would you like to say hello? <laughs> oh nice try <laughs> <laughs> it was worth a bash you've you've been following for a very long time as well Shannon a massive Hi. supporter of the channel hello hello Hello. do I get more <laughs> <laughs> like what <laughs> um how did you find my channel Shannon if you remember uh, someone stole one of your Harry Potter videos and I found it through their channel and I just kind of followed you back, followed it backwards to your channel. That's a happy coincidence, isn't it? Was it, was it, uh, was it Harry Potter or Hobbit? No, it was Harry Potter. It was Harry Potter, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you, do you still, um... Do you still enjoy my content as much as you did um, back in those golden days with uh, the boy who shall not be named? Absolutely not. It's horrible listening to you. <laughs> it's just not the same, is it? It's just not the same. Never. No, but yes, I'm, I'm, I absolutely adore it. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I must admit, Shannon, that... Uh, uh i'm sorry if this is getting awkward but i just want it's just such a nice way of, of saying like thank you to you shannon because like um obviously i could you know i i thank uh, everybody whatever <laughs> you uh but but seriously like um i think you have listened to basically every single thing that i've ever made <laughs> um you know so helena like um we were on about uh patreon a little bit and uh i was saying i got a bit sidetracked but um i was saying that i've been more comfortable with people supporting me on patreon as time has gone on um i was trying to get to the fact that i feel that i do uh at least offer some some sort of extra content with patreon you know people are not just like throwing in the dollars as a thank you um although when i've i have run polls on patreon and asked sort of like what is the principal reason for your support and uh a lot of people have just sort of said like uh a, as a way of uh, saying thank you for the content that i've enjoyed as a way of supporting you etc 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 but um i have um google drive uh downloadable audio libraries um that i sort of link uh through that patreon support and shannon has like devoured those <laughs> audio libraries uh i think there's like there's probably about 300 files or more on there and i think you've listened to them all and probably some of them multiple times so um and that sort of thing is like 
really, really uh, incredible. Like it, it's it's so supportive to know that there are certain individuals out there that sort of like want to consume everything you do. Because like um, when I when I got a um, I got a, a big boost in in views and subscribers on that first YouTube channel when um, I got to about chapter five, chapter six in the first Harry Potter book. So uh, The Hobbit had been sat there and it had started to bring in a few views. Um, and I'd had a little experiment with Pride and Prejudice, uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, A Christmas Carol. Um, and it was just sort of like you know like just just a tiny little bumpy bump 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 like hobbit just uh bumping above these other things that i'd started playing around with but then um i looked up at my very small little bookshelf that i had in that small apartment uh in in stockholm at the time like just living by myself not much stuff and i had about nine books on this bookshelf and one of them was philosopher's stone and i just thought Ooh, I could try Harry Potter. <laughs> and so I got this boom through Harry Potter. But like I mentioned earlier, when um, when all that content got removed, um, of course, like the, the, the views and the, the engagement dropped hugely with it, right? And um, similarly, when uh, I had to stop working on Tolkien or I had to work, stop working on... Uh, C.S. Lewis or many many other things that I'd sort of dabbled with um, so it's it's so encouraging when certain people say look honestly <laughs> whatever you read uh, it, it almost doesn't matter you know what I mean like I of course it matters to some extent but you know what I mean that, that I just I really enjoy what you do it's it's great and like as someone sort of quite new to something and sort of hoping to uh make it and be successful whatever that means um sort of having people out there that are just sort of like go steven go Steve. <laughs> you know what i mean just like make stuff make stuff make whatever you want to make read whatever you want to read i don't care like, like when just... you recorded in camera manual yeah exactly <laughs> uh yeah yeah so like on my original channel when i got to ten thousand subscribers which um suddenly came very quickly um there was a few of you that were saying oh yeah you could read anything you could read Cam the camera manual steve you yeah, read the what... camera manual that thanks dad that's what Teresa just said trying to steal her oh yeah it. sorry my ears have gone <laughs> yeah uh, there was the camera and then there manual was the, the camera manual as yes. well yeah i mustn't forget the camera manual um, but yeah, so like as like a little 10,000 subscriber special, um, I tried to put that to the test and uh, read a camera manual, uh, actually, and um, a little extract from the Oxford Dictionary. It was none of the words, just the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was, it was that was very peaceful. Uh, so that little I called it bored to sleep. Um, and bored to sleep is still in the Google Drive. Uh, but we should maybe so, revamp that again. It sounds like fun. <laughs> good idea, Helena. I was saying the other day um, I, on Discord somewhere, I, I was saying I was thinking of doing a bored to sleep 2.0 uh, as like a 30,000 subscriber special. And like these sorts of things have become a bit more common, actually. Um, ASMR. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I wanted you to say it, not me. But um, yeah, I was a, an early fan of ASMR, actually. Um, certain aspects of it, anyway. So about 2012, I think I first discovered it through uh, Gentle Whispering, who's sort of known as the queen of ASMR, um, and uh, that was sort of in my mind when uh, I first sat down with The Hobbit and Fantastic Mr. Fox was not doing an ASMR whispered reading because they're generally terrible at reading. Uh, like it's super lovely, it's relaxing, 
but I honestly like back then I know I sound really pretentious right now um but um I couldn't listen to some of these people uh read books out loud like I had to try and like shut it off and just listen to the uh the cutesiness and then I just realized that that sort of ASMR wasn't for me I I thought like um okay just certain sounds and certain atmospheres are nice but as soon as someone started reading a story I was too engaged in the story you know the the words are a distraction and and I found a Polish uh channel quite early on and that didn't bother me at all because I couldn't understand what she was saying (laughs) so it was just a pleasant voice pleasant atmosphere um but I equally thought okay I not really a fan of those audiobooks where it's very uh sort of like monotonous and too upper class and um the asmr stuff love the concept uh, of sort of things to do with um uh, it sounds overly spiritual for how i really feel about things but but things to do with meditation uh mindfulness uh headspace um positive mental health sort of related things uh felt very important to me so i was sort of thinking good audiobooks asmr trying to look after your brain um so that 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 was the plan what was that shannon become secret garden become secret garden (laughs) yeah exactly so I sort of hoped that if you're really listening you sort of think oh this guy's sort of doing quite a good job like he sort of seems to actually understand what he's reading um he sort of gets the, the the feeling of the book uh sort of is in the mind of the author to some extent if you if you know what I mean um I wasn't too worried about voice acting the characters, but I also realized that I'm just such a nerd that I can't resist it. Um, So I was sort of like, okay, if some character voices come along, I'll just pretend I'm reading to the kids and they won't even notice. They'll just think it's funny. They find it amusing. And if you're really listening, like I said, you'll sort of enjoy something about the the atmosphere. Um, But equally, if you were to turn the volume down quite low, you hear the rustle of the pages, those sorts of things, you could fall asleep to it. You know, you could escape, uh, you could just relax, uh, let the words like drift in and out of your consciousness and and maybe get a good night's sleep and get woken up at three in the morning by uh, an Adidas advert, um, which I know happens. Um, hence why I never have any adverts in my videos, only at the start um but you know it's youtube at the end of the day um so yeah that was that was the that was the plan to um to create sort of a soothing atmosphere whilst trying to bring the books to life and then over these three years i've experimented with different things so like some things are much more in your face and vibrant and uh sort of less relaxing and then some things like what I'm sort of playing around with uh, a little princess at the moment, for those of you that have tried that, um, more in the secret garden vein, uh, calm, uh, but still having fun with the character voices and, and those sorts of things. I know you're very good friends with a, an Austrian movie actor, uh, Arnie somebody, I can't quite remember mm-hmm. his- so and, and I, I, he made a guest appearance once on on one of his shows. I was wondering if you were you were going to maybe see if he was free again and could perhaps come and read the <laughs> Three Little Pigs or something. Yeah, I I did uh, play around. I I got I I lost my I lost my confidence in my Arnold Schwarzenegger voice. I don't know what happened. I think it's lack of lack of practice. I think it's something to do with being around Swedish people. I think that's what happens. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I, it's like um, I don't. I don't have many native native English conversations these days, and there's certain 
gaps in humor <laughs> you do you know uh, what i mean um yeah. and yeah. so like i i used to like mess around with my own with my old work colleagues uh and like an old best friend of mine uh with silly voices um and like doing the Arnold Schwarzenegger and things was like one of my absolute favorite things and Smeagol uh, was just like always things that like really entertain me and like playing around with um accents uh being football commentators uh so like one of us would be sort of like uh, you know, I, we tried very hard in the first half and uh, the opposition they scored a goal and we said, you know, it, it happens, it is football, but uh, it is a game of two halves. So, you know, we try very hard and, uh, you know, so like, and then the other one be like, oh yeah, absolutely. Like they were terrible, absolutely shocking defender on the first half. Like, they don't even know what they're doing about, you know, like, and just like playing around like this all the time. But then as I've been living in Sweden these last few years, I don't have that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just don't really like have like a, a close friend that's got that um, terrible humor uh, to sort of play around with uh, you know what I mean so I just have to I just have to make my own characters and my own voices but like there's like something about that like impersonation I think Sean Bean is the only one that I still feel like I I can do Sean Bean. One does not simply walk into mud. But uh, like Sean Bean, he's from technically from from the same city as me in Sheffield, uh, back home, Yorkshire. And the well, uh, thing I've noticed is that when there's doing anything at all, this there always seems to be a, a lad in from Yorkshire. Why is that? Ah, it is very strange that actually, even um even in Middle Earth, you'll find a few Yorkshiremen right. walking around countryside. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> I noticed it's, like... it's odd that. <laughs> no, it don't matter. You can be, you can be in middle of London. You can be in Digi Booty, and I'll sell there. What there's a Yorkshireman yeah. strolls in to bar. <laughs> no, but I definitely have reoccurring characters. Yeah, uh, we were that poor that we we had to sleep in a sock. <laughs> oh, you're lucky. I was born in a septic tank. Who's who's we had anybody? A septic at... tank, but it was full of holes. <laughs> at least it were dry. <laughs> but it's like, is it? Where where does anybody know where Yorkshire is apart from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it's north it's in England. England. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. It's the it's the biggest county in in England. Uh, so that was one sort of fascinating thing um, that I encountered when moving to Sweden was that nobody had heard of Yorkshire. Um, Yorkshire. And Yorkshire, yeah. And um, we're very proud of Yorkshire for whatever reason. And uh, it was a little bit painful to, to move to Stockholm. And the first question was always like, oh, wh where are you from? London? Like, no, <laughs> don't mention that, say, that, that city. Uh, and they were sort of like, oh, I don't recognize your accent. Like, are you American? Definitely not. And then I would say like, no, I'm from the north of England. Oh, it's Scotland? No. <laughs> Yorkshire, sorry. Um, and so some people had heard of certain places in Yorkshire. So I'd say like, um, Sheffield and you know you're gonna get the the Swedish lad down the pub who's sort of like Wednesday United you know like doing the football teams um and I'm like mm, not too interested no but like I was happy that they'd heard of it um maybe a Yorkshire Terrier maybe a Yorkshire pudding um York some people had heard of which I was happy about um Leeds again some football fans might know Leeds but generally I had to say Manchester which is not even in Yorkshire it's just in the north of England um Liverpool uh 
someone even thought recently, didn't they? Comment saying that they thought I sounded like Ring Paul McCartney or something. Do you remember Mama Fox? I do. Yeah. Like you sound like the Beatles. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> but it's close enough. Um, but then the thing was, you see, like Yorkshire is actually a very populous county as well. There's about nine million, eight million in Yorkshire, which is almost that was just in our back garden, <laughs> which is almost the population of Sweden. So it was just quite amusing when like people would say like, uh, I had it a couple of times. Uh, I said like, um, no, I'm not from London. Um, I mean, I'm from the north of England. And they said, oh, the countryside, because this is a thing in Sweden. It's a big country with not many people. So if you're not from Stockholm or Gothenburg, which is roughly the same population as Sheffield metropolitan area, um, then you, you're a farmer. Um, this is their words, not mine, because uh, they've got a different definition of what a farmer is than, uh, than we do back home as well. Um, so it's like a bit of a derogatory what is term. Uh, what, what, yeah, what is a farmer in Sweden then? <laughs> I'd yeah, like to know. Basically, you're just from the countryside. So you're a, you're a farmer. No, no vegetables or meat being produced necessarily. Not necessary at all. Okay. Uh, you might have a couple of cats. Um, no, no, it's no, seriously. Just sheep, really. Mostly sheep. They don't even have fact, many sheep. You, you, you often end up marrying sheep. <laughs> Definitely not. But, um, yeah, so a lot of smaller town Swedes do get offended by that whole concept, though. So, um, you know, so basically, even if you're from a smaller town, you can still be labeled as sort of a farmer from those from those couple of bigger cities. So I was like, no, I'm not from the countryside. I'm from uh, the north of England, which is like a very densely populated. It's old working class roots. You know, those Gothenburgers in Sweden might sort of relate to that. That's their like real working core down on the southwest coast. Um, I, but they just they just couldn't really get it. So I, I eventually at one time said, um, oh, well, you know, it's funny enough that you've never heard of Yorkshire because um, Yorkshire actually got more Olympic medals than the whole of Sweden in the last <laughs> Olympic Games. But yeah, you don't have to. Have heard of Yorkshire. It's fine. It's totally fine. You go back to your bubble. But I've had um, I've had fun. Like for anybody who actually likes to have conversations with me, which is obviously not very many people, um, I do like to give them like little, like little history lessons and stuff like that. Because you know the UK has a, a very interesting history, as does most of the world. Let's be honest. But um, you know York is a is a really beautiful city with a very rich history all the way back to the Roman Empire. It was the northern bastion of the Roman Empire and then became a Viking city. And then we can go back to Sweden, you see. So it like then we can find that common ground and chat about Vikings, <laughs> uh, which is always, always good fun. And then I sort of like, oh, why are you here? Why are you in Sweden? Oh, well, I'm trying to rediscover my Nordic heritage, you see taking the the long boat back over the water and mingling so can you actually trace your heritage back like um at what point do you you know do you i can call? dream um okay. so there's not, not there's not a particular line that you can actually follow when you see okay yeah then i mean not the, necessarily not necessarily no <laughs> okay. um but um my mum's maiden name Osborne, uh, particularly with that spelling of Osborne, because there's a couple of variants, does uh, apparently like relate to, um, it's, it's like said to be part of the line of uh, very old Viking names, which comes from uh, Ars Bjorn, uh, which is like the, the Arsa gods, like the Nordic gods. So it basically means God bear. Or like spirit bear, um, Aspian, which became Osborne. So there's an outside chance, uh, and the fact that I'm um, like six foot one and fair head, so I've got like the 
the Nordic vibe going on <laughs> to make generalizations. Have, Historical. Have you tried out one of those, um, I don't know, like those, those DNA tests where it kind of shows like generally the areas where your ancestors probably came from? Yeah, I've not actually. I, I've always been a little bit skeptical of those, but uh, I could try it out. Are, are you, have you tried it or do you know anybody that has tried it? Don't I'm get curious. Me started on genealogy. <laughs> Please, please yeah. get started. Please get started. Uh, I think yeah, it's really I, interesting. I have tried it. Um, I'd say it's probably accurate because I've done quite a bit of research into my ancestry and some of the stuff that I'd found via like just the research when I then later did the DNA test, I could understand why I'm 1.5% Nigerian. Um, so That's like stuff cool. that I, yes, I know. Um, but, uh, you know, stuff that I really found out just through tracking the paths, I could then see, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense because I know 10 generations back there was a slave ship captured right. by the Dutch from the whoever and taken to the Cape. So um, I, it's really, really interesting. Like if you've got both sides, like the, you can do the DNA tracing and then you also have the why, like if you... If you're able to research the why of certain things then it's, yeah. it's really really nice to see yeah that's one thing that i feel like we don't have although um uh one of my cousins is very interested in genealogy and he's actually been doing quite a lot of research so maybe i could do you know uh, ask ask him a little bit and see if i can sort of pull some connections uh to my side and then something like one of those genealogy DNA tests you, you know it would have a, a little bit more basis uh, something to ground it in sort of thing that's really yeah. interesting that one. Mm -hmm. yeah no it's not uh, a fun <laughs> yeah it well, is. to uh, me no one no one no one other than me like and my whole family is interested in it I've got this whole tree like 2,000 people all this research <laughs> and I'm very excited every time I find a new line that I haven't seen before with like mm -hmm. yeah something some interesting bit of history and then no one else cares <laughs> oh, <laughs> all tragic. right <laughs> uh, sad stuff that's why i don't keep it started on that i've got no one to talk to it about <laughs> oh, you need uh, a... except to, uh, yeah except for a work colleague like i, I got her into it and i was like yeah cool yeah yeah use my my heritage account you can just like try it out and like we tried we checked her stuff back all the way to the year like 600 to like a couple of saints and i was like right that's where it, that's where it ended because i was like saying girl if we get all the way back to jesus we're gonna to have to talk because we just keep going back and back and back it's like the da vinci code or something yeah so some people have interesting yeah bits of heritage back there that is that is really cool but you just know that most of us were we were just so, we, we were just peasants weren't we mm <laughs> going back yeah, probably <laughs> just generations of peasants <laughs> pretty sure i'm still a peasant thanks <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah i'm with the, i'm with Teresa. 100 <laughs> percent peasant that's what my dna test will say <laughs> um one thing is i've realized that for the first time ever i've actually missed the start of one of my premieres on youtube <laughs> <laughs> uh 15 minutes ago uh oh, it's died. we're just so engaging i i you made your excuses engaging. i said that the zoom meeting is going on everyone's very understanding oh <laughs> that's very sweet shannon um i'm just gonna boot it up do you think i should do you think i should say goodbye um because the thing was right i i didn't think that was possible because um I've only got a free account for Zoom, so you're limited to 45 minutes uh, video chat. But for Stephen, some I reason- I got a message at the beginning saying that your account had been yeah. changed okay. to have unlimited minutes, so- I, I did, but I didn't it's, take yeah, precautions. <laughs> no, nor did I, Steve, which is why you came along. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna have to go soon. Lovely to meet you all. That's hey, okay. No. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> and on that bombshell. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, I didn't set a timer or anything. I didn't really want to be aware of the time. It was just, it was just nice to, to relax. Um, 
I am I'm just signing in uh to the premiere. I'm just seeing what's going down. I like you're hanging out in here. This <laughs> Lady Bookworm, I see your name like the first thing when I'm when I'm joining. I've not been looking at the chat here, by the way. I this I, I can't multitask. Well, I, I can, to be honest. I'm quite good at multitasking, but I have, I, I have my limits. There are quite a few people in the chat. There's a, there's a few people in the chat, did you say? Yeah. Yeah, I, I see that now. <laughs> Shannon says, we are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. The internet's mental. It really is absolutely bananas. Um, but do we, like... Um, I don't mind being in two places at once. It's absolutely fine. I was just going to uh, say hello quickly. I'm literally just going to put hello because I can't think of anything else at the moment. But um, Kato, <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> Would you like to say hello? You absolutely don't have to. You can just log off if you want yeah, to. I'm I'm good. Hi, I'm Kate. Um, I discovered Stephen's uh, audiobooks because I was looking for a new Hobbit. Mine had been removed. The one that I've been listening to had been removed for copyright issues. Um, that and sounds so I had, Yeah, and so I had to find another one. And um, I stumbled upon Stephen's channel. Um, and then from The Hobbit, I moved into other things. And I think right now my current favorite is Sherlock Holmes. I'm really Yay. enjoying this. Mm. I can't thumbs read the up. books, but I can listen to the audiobooks. And uh, Kate, mm -hmm. are you are you Kate with a C? No, with a K. No, which Kate are you? Um, <laughs> Kate, I forgot. I just changed my name recently. Kaiser. Oh Kate right. Kaiser. Okay. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, that helps. I think I'm Kato the Couch Potato on uh, Patreon. <laughs> that's a solid name. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. That's great. Um, so what? So you found that you didn't enjoy the Sherlock Holmes books? Yeah, I just, I had a hard time reading them and getting into them, reading them on my own. But um, when I was listening, I was kind of hesitant to start the audio books. But then I started listening to them on the drive to work. And I particularly enjoyed it them. And now I'm very excited for the next chapter. Oh, that's really cool. When you tried to read them, did you go from A Study in Scarlet or did you do what I did originally and just like jumped in with one of the adventures or something? One of the adventures. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's where I went wrong because like, um, like I read, um, I think I was about, uh, it, do, it really doesn't matter trying to work out what, how old I was when I first started reading Sherlock Holmes it's irrelevant but like say I was 18 16 it doesn't matter but like I was reading it on a um, on a pdf uh, on my phone and um if that makes sense no, that doesn't make sense was I early and now I'm trying to figure it out it doesn't matter say I was early 20s it doesn't matter and I was um I liked them like I uh I started somewhere in one of the adventures. I don't even remember which one it was. And I quite liked it, but it's this sort of thing that I've mentioned various times where um, I can struggle if there's too many sort of precon preconceptions uh, floating around in my head. Like I've got too many images of other actors or films or something, and I, I mm -hmm. can't really disassociate like and separate um the text from these images um and so with Sherlock Holmes it, like all I could feel was just fustiness like dry Victorian England it just didn't feel real to me um and I really struggled to engage with it but I do remember that I read two or three of those adventures back then and then um on one of the first uh Red Fox book clubs um uh, so it's how long ago is this now time is like escaping me it's a long time ago isn't it is it like two and two and a half years ago or something ridiculous um i read um the speckled band 
and uh, the scandal in Bohemia and enjoyed them more, but still couldn't really settle into it. Uh, and I watched a few clips of various famous Sherlock Holmes productions and things on YouTube. Uh, I'd obviously seen bits and pieces uh, long before that and stuff, but I still just wasn't really sure how to approach it. Wasn't really sure what I thought of the writing. And then, you know, literally just a couple of months ago, I, because I'd been thinking about going back in Sherlock Holmes on and off for a very long time, but there was various things putting me off. And um, I just thought, ah, it's so easy. Just, just download the first book. It'll take a split second to find it. Just download it, open the first page and just see what I thought. And I really liked it. Um, So I don't know if that was something to do with like the sort of monologue that's developed in my head, like something to do with like how my consciousness has changed, like how I sort of, do you know what I mean? Like sat, like mm-hmm. the way that I sat down and, and read it in my mind might have changed from from 10 years ago or even a couple of years ago. But uh, I think a big thing is just starting from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like... You, uh, you've made Sherlock your, your own, haven't you now? You've well, I'm trying. Uh, yeah, I'm, it, you have so because I, I was the same as a lot of people. I felt that, oh, I didn't want to watch listen to Sherlock Holmes I didn't want to read it because it just felt so fusty like you were saying Mm. Um, but you've kind of brought like a youthfulness to it because you're coming at the characters of Watson and Holmes uh, from when they were young yeah yeah because that was the thing like when I jumped into the adventures I just I didn't know where I was placed like mm, who yeah. like where are we in their timeline and like that's never how you would approach uh other book series like i i wouldn't just jump into harry Bo- harry potter book four like goblet of fire and um, who are these people like what what are we doing like we don't know their history or the context or anything you know mm. um and and i i know that uh arthur conan doyle um you know, they, he did write them as anthologies that you, you could just jump into wherever and they, they all have their own little complete stories. And uh, I, I guess that he was very aware at the time that, you know, people are going to be following along. Some people will be jumping in and out. Uh, it was a popular set of stories at the time. So there will have been a lot of discussion and gossip about it, I guess, at the time. If You, you know what I mean? So I guess people were sort of like... Um, making their own ideas, sharing the stories. Um, But it's sort of different now. The context of us just dipping halfway into one of the stories is different to back in 1890 or something. Um, But there's just too many other images crowding, Mm -hmm. crowding in our minds, if you know what I mean. Like you just see this straight backed man in that little hat with the pipe and and uh, and there's these Watsons often displayed as a bit of an idiot, uh, which is a common technique often when there's a very intelligent person to uh, have him with a foil that's uh, rather simple to help heighten the intelligence of the of the smart mm-hmm. one. Um, and then we had the very recent uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, Martin Freeman uh, BBC version, which um, I do think is good in its uh, in its own right, but I would almost treat that as a separate entity. You know, it, it's a it's a modern adaptation. Um, it it cannot be sort of loyal to the books. It's not really. I don't think it's like it, you know it's set 130 years later. So um, and you get the personalities of those actors coming through as with anything, you know, they make it their own, which is fantastic. Um, but um, I, I watched some of the, they call it a study in pink. I think that first uh, episode, uh, Shannon is nodding profusely. Um, so a study in pink uh, when we meet, when, you know, Martin Freeman and, and Cumberbatch meet, 
Um, and I watched some of that and I'd literally just sat down and, and read that first chapter of Sudden Scarlet in my hair. And I was just like, hang on a second, like these Sherlock's are completely different. Like that was just my interpretation but not just my interpretation like they, they, they are like really different like as well like um in the in the tv show um he's very dismissive um like very short not comes across as like he's almost not interested in arrogant the, very arrogant surely um and he's like but it's almost like he doesn't care they're in the room uh it's like he, it's like they've jumped further into his character or they, they've sort of taken other aspects of Sherlock but in that first scene uh, in the book my interpretation was that he was actually very warm like he was extremely excited um very odd um it, it gives me the impression uh I hope this is not too sensitive but it, it gives me the impression of sort of like a a, a bipolar high sort of thing he's he's had this um he's just made what he thinks is the greatest scientific discovery in modern history and uh he's just absolutely elated he's really enthusiastic in it, in it, it like I, I loved Doyle's writing I just thought it was brilliant like I could just so picture him uh grabbing Watson's hand and being like how are you like really like he's just like he was in his little moment you know uh and I could just so picture him at his laboratory table and sort of being like ah you know like sort of like like a Archimedes sort of moment that they walk into um and his mind is running at a thousand miles an hour which was just so different. I think if you, if you then watch the BBC one, completely different mood, completely different mood altogether. Um, and Watson also, I think they heighten his sort of depression and PTSD sort of uh, feelings in the, in the modern version. As in the book, like you definitely get the feeling, who he's... Um, uh, He's had some very tough experiences. Um, he's now, although he was an officer, you know, he's a gentleman and everything, but he's sort of falling on hard times to some extent. But I felt that like him meeting Sherlock was really bringing him back to life in a way that I didn't feel with Martin Freeman's performance. Like when I, when he met Sherlock, he was just sort of a bit like, like like a startled hobbit a bit sort of like oh who's this guy oh oh my god he's very intelligent um as in the book i really saw him as like glowing almost sort of like oh who's this guy bloody hell like he's crazy like he's really interesting and like he wants to go and write about it you know obviously things go on but that meeting sherlock sort of almost you know like snapped him out of this monotony and hopelessness he suddenly met this absolutely fascinating person that um you know he write he says this in the second chapter where he's um he's like says something along the lines of like you might think me a hopeless busybody for how much i'm sort of like uh, obsessing with this guy but you've got to realize that there was nothing else going on in my life and you know and also that he's, he's just sort of captivated by this very very peculiar character and Sherlock is obviously uh meant to be absolutely peculiar have all sorts of different sides to him but also be magnificent you know he's he's supposed he he is uh meant to be one of the most remarkable characters that you encounter and I want to I want you to feel that you know what I mean like I, I don't want you just to feel like oh he's a bit creepy or he's a bit sexy or he's a bit dismissive or I want you to sort of be sort of like whoa I just met Sherlock Holmes I just met Sherlock that's cool I just met Sherlock Holmes Bloody hell. you know like it's something special even if you've never heard of his name before he's like he's gonna really stand out from the crowd you know so anyway <laughs> happy happy to hear that um you're enjoying uh, Sherlock um 
I recorded the third chapter today, actually. Um, so I'll get that going. I'll get it out as soon as I can, but um, I'm trying not to stress myself too much with it. I, I want to do a really good job with it. And because I'm very new to this sort of soundscape, uh, sound effect concept as well. Um, yeah, I just want to take my time and, and make sure that I'm really happy. And yesterday I actually sat down to record it. Uh, there will be more, there is more recording to do. Like there's always going to be some re-recordings. There's some extra sound effects that I want to make. But um, yesterday I sat down to record it and I just couldn't do it. Um, you know, you have to be in a real particular mindset. Uh, and sometimes I do pressure myself to be sort of like, um, okay, I, you know, I, I told myself that I would get this thing done by this day. Um, and, uh, you know, you want to be uh, productive and, uh, and all the rest of it. And, uh, you know, we can all procrastinate and find things difficult and sort of like, uh, no, but just sit down and, and do it. But it just wasn't coming yesterday. And I'd been practicing it quite a few days ago and reading it uh, a few days before that and so enjoyed the third chapter that I didn't want to sit down and record and not be in the mood. So I did set everything up and it takes a while to set stuff up, um, especially when you're living in a small apartment um, with your with your partner and you've got to sort of try and make, make a space, uh, make it work and work around somebody else. Um, but, you know, I set it all up, sat down and for, a, it's very unusual for me is this, by the way, that's why I'm telling you about it. But for about half an hour, I sat here and I was practicing, just like speaking things out aloud, reading it over and over. And I was like, it's not happening. And I got really upset. <laughs> I got really annoyed. Uh, uh, and, you know, like this year has been, a, or last year, it has been a strange year, let's be honest. Um, and I've ended up, uh, like me and Maria were, we're living outside of Stockholm now in a, in a town that we didn't really want to move to, but there's a real housing uh, shortage in Stockholm. Uh, we both want to live in Stockholm and we just had to compromise and end up moving quite far out of Stockholm. Um, tiny, tiny town. Um, not my cup of tea. <laughs> uh, and then with Corona as well. So, you know, you're not traveling. You're both now like doing everything under the same very small roof um and uh you know me and maria are doing great which is wonderful but um you do go a little bit crazy as well and uh you know i really miss uh, living in stockholm um miss all sorts of things miss my mum and dad <laughs> and sometimes you just get in a funk and like last night was recording night, but it wasn't. <laughs> and then I came out of the bedroom like half an hour later and I was just feeling sad. And I was like, um, but it was fine. And uh, Maria was really cool. And uh, I stepped out into the minus 16 for a few minutes that help slightly but then i didn't want to be in this town so i went back in again <laughs> no, it's just so sounds silly. pretty like, bad i'm so sick of this town <laughs> you should maybe just do a, like a satiric like a nice little tour for us of it one day with like your comments of it i don't know i technically i'd like have. to know what's so bad about this uh, little swedish town uh, it's like even can i send you more tea yet to make you feel better if you want well, you have to tell me what you want. Yeah, I, I love those teas. Good. Um, how, how, uh, how are they doing? By the way, just a just a small um, tangent. They uh, that that uh, the David's it is yeah, David's, David's tea. tea. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Most of the stores in Canada are closed. There's one left in Ottawa, and they're uh, shifting more to online business than to physical storefronts which but did it, makes sense for their business model. 
Yeah, but did it look like they were actually going to go under at one point? We thought or was they were it... going to. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, this is the way they're doing, and they haven't sent any we're in financial trouble emails. So that's nice. <laughs> Teresa, okay. can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, do you go. have a curfew yet? Because Mihai says in Saint Laurent they have a curfew. Uh, no, we don't have a curfew. We're just under what I call house arrest. So we're only allowed to leave the house for essential activities like grocery stores, pharmacies, and to exercise. Um, otherwise, we have to stay in our homes. Um, and the Canadian government has now set up a requirement that if you come back into the country, a, you have to have a negative COVID test three days before you come back in. And then you are taken from the airport to a hotel to quarantine there at your expense, no other options. So you can't go quarantine at home with your family. You have to go to a hotel and pay for it. Now I know why he didn't want to talk last night about international travel with me. Yeah, no, it's not gonna happen, honey. Sorry. Sorry, Stephen. We didn't mean to go off onto a completely unrelated topic. You're so welcome. I'm sorry for being rude and just briefly typing on YouTube. I just, uh, this premiere is going to finish very soon. I'm surprised that you kept the, this going as long as it has. Well, Quiet, in my, Teresa. In my opinion, I'm not complaining. Been... I'm just multitasking. <laughs> and it's okay for Stephen to do the same thing. In my opinion, it's been really nice. Um, so I really didn't, I really didn't mind uh, at all. Um, I don't want it to end. Oh. <laughs> He's just going to have to do it again. <laughs> yes, he is. But like, do you think this worked? Do you think it yes. worked? Yes, it's great. Even though I showed up late, I've been having a blast. Thank Your you. dad is hysterical. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad that we actually got to see him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's an well, since he's the original reader, you should maybe do some readings with him. I mean, yes. since you're saying he was, yeah, <gasps> he should re narrate the books that he's written. Yeah. Uh, so I was nagging him about this a very long time ago, um, but he's he's in the Fox fan fold now. Um, and yeah, I have read one of his stories on Twitch uh, a while ago, and. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I've mentioned um, to him on numerous occasions. But we you know, want him to do it. Uh, let him do it. Yes. On my channel. <laughs> on a stream with us. Mama Fox, <laughs> tell him we need this. I'll tell him. Don't worry. But we, we could kick it off on Zoom, couldn't we? Yeah. Test it out. Test it out on Zoom. We'll see if he... If he deserves those privileges, it's it's a consider it a focus group. <laughs> okay. Consider it giving another creator a starting point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th just, this is what I mentioned to to him about two and a half years ago. <laughs> just don't threaten. Just don't threaten him with copyright infringement. <laughs> it's more likely the other way around, actually. <laughs> yeah, um, he, he's quite familiar with Zoom now. You see, so that's yeah. Yeah, it's true. Just one yeah. second. Um, there's a good little crew in the. Where are we in the? Wait, let me is, just refresh. Is Logan in the premiere? Because I'm surprised he's not here. He's like I said earlier. He's got a lot of stuff on his mind, so yes, it's not really does. surprising. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not surprised at all. Oh, so on the premiere, I'm um, just doing the little book haul at the end. I did not see Logan in chat anywhere. Sad. You didn't? No, no. Did um, you see the steak he bought for his wife? It was like 65 USD. That's Honey, that's, that's not surprising for here. For a to good me, that is. Steak, that's that's I've never seen a steak that expensive. Honey, a goose. And I actually pri I priced this. A goose for Christmas last year was over 50 bucks. But why would you buy a goose? Why not? Because steak is delicious. 
I'm trying to, I was, I've been for the past five years, I was pushing the Christmas lobsters on my family and they refused. So yeah. like, what the heck? Let's try goose. My favorite know? part of Canada is Cape Breton. I want to go to Japan and I hate fish. So. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pescatarian. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Oh, you're so I lucky. Just wanna, I eat so much fish. <laughs> you are so lucky. Boyfriend's uh, vegan, and so I have gone completely meat free, and I am dying for bacon. Why? He ain't there with you. No, but I do eventually have to get myself used to it. No, you don't. You just have to cook two separate meals. I just fry um, smoked salmon. I know it's like sacrilege. <laughs> I just fry smoked salmon, and it's kind of got quite a nice. It's quite yeah. a nice bacon alternative. It's just it's not as oily. It's actually nice. Yeah, Stephen, you're very quiet. No, I was. Uh, the premiere is literally finishing. Uh, so I was just saying hello to people, like a hello and goodbye. Again. <laughs> yeah. I've never missed a premiere before. This is this is shocking. Maria's vegetarian, isn't she? Yeah, she she's sort of become pescatarian again, actually now. Did we um, meet her? Did I miss that? I showed her. up thirty minutes late, so I have no idea. Did you introduce her in the beginning of the call? No, I I said she was absolutely welcome to come on, but like a she's shy, b she's studying, and c she's very shy. So maybe will she come I'm, and just I'm... wave and then run away? I'm very shy too. I still. Yeah, I'm shy. We're all shy. Try to be presentable. She doesn't have to chat. She could just wave high into the camera and then run away again. For all of us being very shy and introverted, we talk a lot. Yeah, we're doing a really good. This job. is a book club. Like, what is there really an extrovert here? <laughs> Anyone? Technically, really I'm an point. extrovert. Really? Yeah, I'm in politics and I work in customer uh -huh. service. And uh -huh. I was caught in a crowd of like a million people on Canada Day in downtown Ottawa, and it made me excited. <laughs> Ooh. I've been told I'm an introvert. I'm, I, I've been told I'm an extrovert. Well, you're the honorary member then. <laughs> I'm a bit of a mix, I would say. I think, I think Mama Fox would agree. Yeah, depends where you are and what you're doing. Yeah, I, I can... I can be very extroverted, I, but I can very much like my own space as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it really depends. Really depends. It seems like they've enjoyed the reading, by the way. Seems like they've had a good time. No, Stephen, it, it was horrible. They're just saying that they liked it to boost your ego. I know. They're so manipulative. <laughs> Teresa, we can't stand them, can we? No drives me nuts i don't know why i'm here <laughs> i i tell myself the same thing all the time oh, oh. as long as as long as you're good as long as you're easy on yourself <laughs> i'm just saying i've started the secret garden again for about the 10th time i think yesterday i love that book oh last week i was playing it at night to get zachary to sleep and it was working. He wasn't making, he wasn't staying awake past the first chapter. And finally on Friday, or excuse me, Thursday night, he's like, can we please listen to something different? Because I just keep hearing the same stuff over and over. Yeah. <laughs> so then we hey, went where's to he? Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, he's off for the weekend. Oh. I need my mommy space. Well, I know, but it would be nice to see him too. Next time. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's, he's, he's very welcome, of course. Uh-huh. Okay. He's very welcome. You don't have to send him, send him out of the town just because you're going on no, Zoom. No, he, he goes off every weekend. Like I said, I enjoy my mommy time. Yeah, yeah, of course. That sounds sounds very important. Gee, my other server, they don't even know he exists. <laughs> uh. he seems Teresa, like you guys don't have well okay i can't speak for mama fox because she obviously has a kid but for some sometimes you just need to be your own person and not 
a parent. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I hundred and fifty percent understand that. Not that I'm a parent, but <gasps> hi. I decided to take a break from work for two seconds. Um, I one hundred and fifty percent get that. Not because I'm a parent, but because I have so many balls in the air that sometimes I have to take a step away from the balls, or. <laughs> You just stop there. <laughs> or I, I, or I lose it myself. Where is this going, Teresa? Uh, well, What's it was completely to innocent until Shannon started giggling. <laughs> I, I have so many hats that if I don't have my personal me hat on and withdraw from it, mm. I feel the same way. Mm. Balls. Balls. <laughs> I'm very confused. Oh, uh, that sounds like John Cage and <laughs> Elementary People. <laughs> I just realized something. I feel so bad for Stephen because he is like the only dude in the conversation right now. <laughs> I'm fine. Stephen and the girls. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm entertaining myself. You mean you're not even listening to us anymore? We're all devastated. He is the dude in the conversation. So why? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to drop my pledge because you're ignoring us. <laughs> He's a guy. Guys tend to not listen to girls. That is so the truth really in that statement. That's so where really I've been scary. going wrong all these years, clearly. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, I'm honestly, I'm not, I'm not so into those sorts of uh, traditional stereotypes. I, I hope I'm a 21st century person. You are. I, I hope so. Um, like your dad. I mean, to say I grew up in a small town in the north of England, I, I do my best. Stockholm, Stockholm was a was a necessary change. No, but I, I think I've 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 never been um, I've never been a macho man. Let's say. Um, so yeah, I, I um, yeah, like I, I try my best not to reinforce the. The sort of gender stereotypes if you know what i mean and like um spending a lot of time in uh sweden um th th there is a lot of uh there's a lot of more uh traditional views here too but it is a very progressive country if you if you look at it uh on a, on a world uh level so a lot of people here they just they don't have they don't have any time for those sorts of like guys do this women do that sort of conversations they're just like no. yeah i've heard like like in the advertisements it's also more like little boys actually playing with the barbies and it's like it's really like everywhere trying mm. really to move against that and i find that very interesting because um in germany it's all pink or blue extremely really? gender way. Yeah, it's extremely, this is the boy stuff, this is the girl stuff. And like, even in the kindergarten, like uh, my little girl was telling me when she was like five, she wants to be a boy because the boys are like in a, in a, in a, in a uh, oh, no, I don't have the English word, uh, gang. The boys are in the gang, the boys are the fastest and boys can do this. And the boys are all like, I'm like, no, that's not true you know mm. and, and and it's kind of also enforced a bit more by even I think by the the teachers or like yeah mm. it's just kind of it really and then you go to the bank and you get offered like you sit there with your husband and you're like yeah he, he gives you the pitch for the gold credit card and then just the credit card for your husband arrives and you're like was I not sitting there mm. uh the mm. little miss shall I not have my own credit card <laughs> it's that like just really... annoying it's like yeah I'm small town sm small town Germany is probably yeah it's interesting um coming from a third world country I thought like backwards when you come to Germany you think first world country yeah. and then you're very surprised <laughs> by what you find sometimes it's mm. very yeah. Yeah. especially with the gender things like yeah in the end i think in south africa also just in the work environment yeah even in the work environment here yeah, i can pick up very very sexist Oof. but yeah it's it, it's yeah it makes me annoyed <laughs> yeah 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 I, but i'm actually really surprised because um uh 
I studied some um, social demographics uh, in third year of university uh, back home and um, <clears throat> Germany um, so I, I, I've uh, I've always had an interest in sort of geography history world affairs a bit of like geopolitics and blah 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 um, and uh, Germany like I got the impression that it was uh, perhaps not as progressive as some of the Nordic countries, um, like Holland in some regards as well, but that it certainly wasn't one of the more traditional, uh, you know, like I, I've always sort of like looked at some of the Mediterranean countries as uh, maintaining some more of these sort of like uh, matriarch, patriarch sort of ways of operating um uh and then yeah the the nordics like clearly stand out as uh for all sorts of different factors um moving towards different ways of operating or trying to move towards different ways of operating and more equal um uh, in many ways but yeah surprised to hear that i must say that germany being um yeah <laughs> being like such an economic power so progressive in so many ways would mm. be you could argue quite backwards in, in other it, it is a small town though given it's not like it's berlin or munich or something no maybe it's even, different there but i don't know yeah but even so even so like you know these things um they're still gonna percolate to some extent you would think like it's like reflective I mean, a small town can be more reflective of a of a general feeling in a country than the capital city. I would I would say, you know what I mean. Like a, capitals are often melting pots and more metropolitan, and uh, can can have a very different feeling to the rest of the of the country. Uh, yeah, interesting. Have you have you spent much time in Berlin as well, Helena, or have you have you always been small town? Well, I've been there twice. <laughs> There's an embassy there, so I've had to go there once. And then I was lucky, um, was it a couple of years ago? Uh, Fleetwood Mac had a concert there, and I was able to go to that, which was great. But no, otherwise, I don't really end up there at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. It's such a beautiful city. I had the chance to go a few years ago and tour around near the Brandenburg Gate and seeing how close the Holocaust Memorial is and how huge it is right behind the Brandenburg Gate and that it's right in front of where Hitler's bunker used to be was a phenomenal sight to see. It gave me shivers. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. I mean, Berlin's got a lot to offer, uh, certainly. I mean, you know, obviously, like, rich history, all sorts of things in more modern history. And then, um, like, it, it's very cultural, uh, all sorts of, like, art movements, music movements, and all sorts of stuff. Nice cafes and things. It's, you know, it's, it's like, it's a nice place to hang out as a as a tourist. I would be interested as to what it's like to to live in. That was why I was asking you as well, because it's, it's something that me and Maria have mentioned, like, we've thought of. Berlin doesn't appeal to me as much as some other places, but I, I've been curious about Switzerland, Holland, Germany. Um, yeah, even like Australia, New Zealand. She's a bit interested in living in Portugal. Not sure about that. Even in <laughs> Berlin, you can bring your dogs into stores with you and there are parks mm -hmm. everywhere, like so much green space. Yeah, I, that that sort of thing really means a lot to me. Um, but that was one of my concerns with Berlin as well, that it's, um, yeah, it's green. Um, You're not going to get hiking, but, like the videos that you've posted and stuff, but no, the city is... No, you don't get hiking. You don't really get, no, yeah. The parks are enormous and the trees are mature and you can tell that the city is steeped in history, good and bad. Yeah, yeah, like like everywhere almost, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you do have... Um, the, I mean, it's still... Um, 
like a real gateway city i i think as well like it, this is sort of like pre pre corona way of thinking but like um i did some interrailing uh, a couple of years uh, like a month here and then a month another time um and went from berlin uh, down to prague uh, and you go quite close to dresden uh, which I would be very interested in visiting. And um, there's some amazing scenery, sort of like as you exit Germany and head into the Czech Republic, um, these like valleys and um, uh, yeah, I remember like various rivers and waterways. Like It was extremely beautiful. I forget the name of, of the valley, but uh, yeah, you're not going to get hikes in Berlin, obviously, but there's some wonderful nature close by as well. Yeah. Whereabouts are you, Helena, in Germany, like, roughly? Bavaria. <laughs> so, Bavaria. Uh, mm. yeah, like an hour hour away from Nuremberg, if that says anything, like Nuremberg. Or yeah, yeah. Three hours away from Munich, two hours away from Frankfurt. Yeah. Where are you in relation to Cologne? Oh, five, six hours on the train. Oh. So more towards the southeast. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just small town, Germany, with uh, farmers <laughs> but, and tractors. And like, it's not a day in my town if you don't see a tractor coming past. <laughs> like, oh, so we always got like, this tractor. <laughs> Found the tractor. Um, yeah. But in terms of nature, there's some good stuff down there. Yeah, what's really lovely is that there's so many cycle paths um, that's just dedicated cycling paths. All like, we, I live on the River Main, um, and and you can just all go all the way along that river, like all the way through to Frankfurt, like or like the other way, meet up with the Dano, and then go that way. And there's so many people doing these cycle tours, hey. and just cycling for like weeks. Um, across the country along the rivers and things yeah um, that sounds awesome I always dreamed of doing this you know I was still living in South Africa I read this uh, I don't know they, they were these retired people doing this trick from Germany down to Budapest on the bikes and I thought that sounds lovely I would love to like cycle for two weeks down from Germany to Budapest and and then I figured out I don't like cycling <laughs> I hate <laughs> cycling <laughs> I just, just can't stand it. Um, so I prefer to run or walk. Um, so that dream is just not going to happen. So I think um, anyways, but it's it's very green, lots of cycling paths. Um, I wouldn't say mountains, but lots of forests, like a lot, a lot of forests. Um, mm. And if you go to more to the, towards the south, like friends of ours live in Munich, they take day trips out to the Alps. So if you're down there, then you've got a lot of hiking options. And or if you ski, you good with sports that way um then then there's a lot of stuff like that that's also really great like more towards the south yeah there's there's some uh like really gorgeous places in the in the south of germany that i've passed there if i can just interrupt one sec because kato uh, kato was or kate was saying uh goodbye and i just wanted to say thank you for for joining um super nice to have you here. and i just if you had one second um before other people leave as well i just wanted to ask because it is hard to engage sometimes you know we're all busy doing our things or whatever but i just wanted to ask like is there something that you would like to sort of see included like if if we try this format again um i guess i, I guess i'm just passing out like the feedback form <laughs> but you know what I mean like uh like oh what 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 would you like to use this for um like if a couple of people joined next time that didn't join this time for example um like you know see if they want to introduce themselves of course but like do you think it's nice just to like have a chat have a mingle blah de blah de blah or uh because like this was a little test run anyway but like um would you like more structure or like those ideas that i mentioned about uh trying to read a story together you know like someone volunteering to be a character or, or whatever or i'm just i ideas ideas for the for the panel 
I think whatever is good, to be honest with you, this is the first thing in 2021 that has actually put me in a good mood. So anything we do is pretty fantastic. That's very nice, Teresa. I'm sorry your 2021 has been so rubbish. I tried to return it in the buyer's remorse period for the first 15 days, but it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, return policy, horrible. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm I'm very happy to hear that this has been a little highlight to it. So that's that's super nice. Uh, has anybody else got a a, a thought? Kato, it, Kate, if you need to run away, of course, please run away. But it was I, just because I just have to go feed my bearded dragon. <laughs> He's <hungry>. okay, <laughs> okay. But it was just like if you if there was any like any thoughts that you had um, before you left, that was I just I wanted to try and grab a hungry it. lizard waits for no man. <laughs> He gets grumpy. Might eat you know. the man. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it. I liked being able to see everyone and actually kind of chat and um, especially talking about the different audiobooks and everything and how people, which ones people liked and all that. And I really enjoyed it. Hmm. It was a lot of fun. It's like book club extra. Yep. Book club extra. Because it just I mean, adds. Sorry, you go, Shannon. Well, when we're when we have book club on YouTube, yeah, we talk about it, but we also goof off. And, you know, we really don't go. In, I heard that we really don't go in too deep into you know the book chat discussion. Yeah, it is. And I do find that tricky. Like I've said, because I need to then like wait for the chats to you know what I mean like the messages to come in, uh, and you don't have a voice, so I get very aware that I'm sort of just staring at the chat and uh, you know what I mean it, it's just a little bit awkward as this is obviously far more natural and that was always something that I really wanted like I wanted the sort of book chat and sometimes we do like maybe someone says something in the chat and then I go off on like a five minute endless ramble uh, about it so you get like a, a one-sided book club that you guys can sort of like initiate and shape with the things that you're talking about uh but yeah good it adds point, a really Sharon. cool extra layer of interaction and just an extra layer of experience that's cool plus we I... like it when he rambles it's true mm. i think <laughs> it just kind time. of makes it it makes it kind of real yeah because in the end, you're just consuming a lot of stuff off the internet. But in this case, then you are now. It's interactive you know, with each other. It's actually real. <laughs> it's not mm -hmm. just... like we've, we've chatted so much with you in Discord yeah. and in private messages and stuff. But to actually have a video chat where we can see you and see how you're responding and have the two-way instead of just trying to interpret how you're feeling via text is yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. I, th I think that I think that's very cool. <laughs> no, but seriously, I think it's like it's it's uh, it's it's really really nice. Um, I wish I'd been a little bit better organized with this, but I was quite nervous about the concept. You know, I'm not going to lie. And um, I I did mention this some weeks ago, right? In a in a poll on the YouTube community, and there seemed to be quite a lot of interest. And that you know, there was a couple of people that were like when I've mentioned Twitch and things in the past, they're sort of like, oh, I, I don't want to download a new platform. I, I, I just want to keep things in one place or, or they're just not interested in it. And that's absolutely fine. Um, but I felt like there was a fair bit of interest. But um, on Patreon, um, over the last mm, maybe like eight months, like basically since Lord of the Rings uh stopped uh i mean particularly since harry potter stopped to some extent but definitely when harry, uh, lord of the rings stopped um sort of like uh if i can use the boring terms of like engagement uh has reduced on patreon so i'm not talking about like uh, the number of people supporting and and all those sorts of things but the the sort of commenting and uh, interaction on patreon uh has reduced so i can tell that people are still um certainly enjoying the content and uh the the sport is is relatively consistent um but it's very sometimes i get a bit frustrated that i um i don't really know 
what you're thinking, if you know what I mean. So it's like I get comments in isolation on YouTube, um, but sometimes I'm sort of like wanting a bit more sort of direct feedback of sort of like uh, what what's working well, what's working less well, what sort of ideas do you find interesting? Do you know? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Just like uh, things that yeah. can sort of like reassure me that because because I've had to change how I'm operating as well. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I'm not going to touch anything that's copyrighted, for example. Like, I, I've lost those um, those stories that were I could rely on that were were bringing people in that were engaged, um, and I'm having to sort of like um, rely on things that are uh, uh, obviously still very popular but less less popular less modern um you know view, views have reduced and things like that so it's like uh sometimes i sort of like need reassurance that you're sort of going in the right direction or if i'm not like i just want constructive feedback sometimes you know like nobody wants to receive a message like oh this video is rubbish but but you know just sort of constructive feedback and sort of um yeah like those sort of like community sort of community feelings um i i really really enjoy um but sometimes i like i write things out on patreon and like don't don't get very many messages in reply and i'm sort of like Ah, um, you know, I like I'm. So, I, I want people to talk to me. <laughs> um, and so, like, with like... sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. So it's like we have some nice chat on Discord, which is great. But like, there's only a small, very small percentage of people that uh, mingle on Discord uh, versus Patreon and Patreon versus uh, YouTube, right? Um, so it's um, like with with this Zoom concept. Uh, I really had no idea uh, how many people would be interested in showing up. And um, yeah, when I suggested the idea a few weeks ago, I sort of estimated um, like maybe 20. So like maybe like 20, 25. And then when I was... Uh, actually scheduling it like i said i feel i felt a bit silly that i did a poor job uh of scheduling it like i didn't um it, it's very hard to know <laughs> like how to uh create the right posts and um you know it, it's 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 a tricky thing it's a tricky thing and like i'm just doing this on my own as well you know so i don't have like colleagues or people to like bounce off ideas or to um so i i sort of guessed that i should have given more notice to the to the date and time that i was doing this i was procrastinating it a little bit i didn't know when it would best work um and then i thought okay well two days official notice is better than nothing because sometimes like that 48 hour window is actually quite effective because if you if you say one week or two weeks ahead, people can forget or, you know, like lose that sort of semi spontaneity as 48 hours. Like sometimes I feel like, okay, that's good enough. Cause it's sort of, it gives notice, but holds attention sort of thing. But I was a little bit sad when, <laughs> when I, I shared the post a couple of days ago, um, mentioning zoom. Um, and it felt like, I was like, oh, did I miss the opportunity here or something? Has like the as the interest uh, faded a little bit? So, honestly, like, thank you so much for joining today. And I, I really just told myself before that um, it will just be lovely to like see a couple of your faces and like say hello to someone. And I, I didn't want to put any pressure on it, basically. Um, but very nice to hear that you think the concept has worked really nice um how two things um 
would you be comfortable with me sharing any of this video? No. No. I'll, no. I'll second that. Um, I'm not very <laughs> presentable looking today. Um, <laughs> That's totally fine. I, I didn't yeah. think I, I didn't think that 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 would be. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, I mean, even just being on the live call is like thrilling enough for me. Yeah. It's, it's like that was a quite a, like a hurdle to overcome already. So it wasn't uh. necessarily easy to yeah. to to join. Um, so I think I think that maybe a lot of people wanted to join them. That maybe said originally, yeah, uh, that, that sounds great. Was maybe just me. too scared to actually do yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's more that kind of thing, like exposing yeah, yourself, which yeah. is a bit. Hmm. I just calculated that... the time difference wrong. What was that, Kate? Sorry. I calculated the time difference wrong. I, oh, I right. thought it started an hour after it actually did. So oh, I can't had to Google a UTC time, time calculator. I had to yeah. Google it as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, skid, I I went the easy route. I just Googled, what time is this UTC in Georgia? What is yeah. the difference? And I got yeah. the right time. I just, it, and this is all last night, and it completely just waltzed its way out of my head. Shannon, are we in the same time zone? What time is it there? Uh, it's 512. Yeah, same time zone. Yeah, you, me, and me are all in the same one. Yeah, I, I used to, uh, in posts and things, I used to put... Uh, eastern standard time or whatever uh gmt which can be the same as utc sometimes i used to put central eastern europe sorry central european time which is my time zone uh and sometimes even something further afield but i just thought well you know universal standard time is universal standard time for a reason let's just use that and and what like might, hope, what hope might people be cool can... steven is if you were to link the universal time calculator that you use instead of telling I've done that loads of times oh. <laughs> no well, i did mind. used to do that i used i used to like uh I've, a few times i've shared the link to uh the website that i use um but um yeah it doesn't always doesn't well always when i wanted help. to put it into my google calendar uh, when you have to pick the time zone for the time that you're putting in there is no utc there's only gmt so uh -huh. Yeah, then I had to look it up. It's like, oh, okay, it's pick GMT then. So it actually wasn't an option in my calendar. Yeah, that's it. interesting. It's, it's annoying, yeah. is that actually? Because like, uh, you know, obviously with um, uh, with daylight savings and everything, GMT doesn't always exist. You know, GMT becomes British summertime. Uh, so it's like, that was, that was, that's been my um, issue with using certain time zones. I just thought like, I'll try and streamline it and just use UTC. And then like, if you if you google or if you use one of those like um time zone converter websites which are so easy like super nice like super nice to use um you know you can get the answer so quickly um but i know it can be confusing i totally get that and like uh for everybody else out there like doing doing everything else you know like you're you're in your own life i'm in my little bubble <laughs> no but you, you know what i mean like i, I like it, it's easier for me because like I'm, I'm i'm living this little this little thing um as if you're busy doing other things yes it's uh it's a, it can be a bit more confusing or whatever um but yeah easy to get the wrong time zone totally get that um i totally understand what you're saying about um i think some people will have wanted maybe will have wanted to join or thought the concept was nice but then you're sort of like oh, i don't really want to put my face on zoom or um you know maybe they, they're not familiar with zoom and you've got to download it that can put you off uh, very easy to to do that um and i tried to say a while ago and on the post the other day i was like you don't need to use your webcam if you don't want to you don't need to use your microphone if you don't want to like please feel free to just uh, sort of sit in the audience with a balaclava on basically uh, if it was like a theater um, and just and just treat it as a regular live stream but you sort of have the entertainment of seeing some people's faces and like having the little mingle going on but you're just uh, a spectator rather than a participant but um, 
so I, I think like IR, for example, I think IR has been in for, for most of the stream, but hasn't popped on. So like that sort of thing, like absolutely fine. If you want to just be a part of it in your, uh, you know, as a spectator, absolutely. But like the, sec the second question was, um, uh, like maybe it's a silly question, but has anybody any ideas of um, how to encourage, like how to sort of like advertise this concept to sort of encourage people to give it a go? Because like, I, I think it's awesome to be honest. And part two of the question is, have you come across anybody else on YouTube or anything else using Zoom? Uh, like, have you heard or seen anybody else using Zoom? uh as a hangout as like a live stream alternative or whatever nope i haven't <laughs> seen youtubers do it but the candidate that i work with in canada uses zoom to connect and have q and a's with supporters all oh, right with supporters one second i'm cooking dinner so i will answer you in a moment oh no worries shannon no worries and um, i really do gotta be going oh of course, but Kate. It was really nice to hang out with you and meet you all. Likewise, likewise. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to like grab your jumper no and like. <laughs> yeah, I was just curious if you, if you had any feedback. I really appreciate you hanging Have a around. Have day, guys. Bye. You Bye. too, Kate. See you later. See you later. Um, but yeah. Okay, yeah. What? Yeah, any any thoughts on like like I said, maybe it's a silly question, like uh, asking. Uh, but I just, um, I, I yeah, I just really want more people to try this because I I think like from from um, you know from the book club live streams and everything over these last couple of years, like I saw Shannon, you were saying Speckled Band and Bohemia was ready a year ago, but it must be yep. way longer because I I reuploaded uh, or like I uploaded an edited version of Speckled Band on this channel um, over a year ago, but that was a edit from a live stream over a year previous to that. So I, th I think it is about two and a half years ago. Um, mm. But so, so you the didn't book specify. <laughs> what? You didn't specify which true. one version you wanted. True, very true. Uh, but so yeah, I th so but anyway, the live streams um, I started them uh, spring 2018. Yeah. So it's like going up for three years since I started the live stream uh, idea, you know, just here and there. Um, and there are a lot of people out there that are interested in the live streams and they just want to consume the regular videos. Completely understand that. But there are some people out there that actually really like the live streams and actually uh, some people have commented that it's one of their favorite things to like hang out in the live streams because it's a different uh sort of uh concept so like i really feel like there's a bunch of people out there that would actually really enjoy this if i could force them to you just join. need to relax man <laughs> if, if you're gonna have fun it's gonna grow just fine and in the end, if you're authentic in your communications and you're having fun, you're going to have no problem. So yeah, yeah. I would say <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah fair I enough. agree. Yeah, I do too. Because, it, I mean, it is a new concept for a lot of people. A lot of people have heard of Zoom, but only this last year has it, certainly in the UK, we've never heard of Zoom until coronavirus and everybody's working from home. So Zoom has taken off, hasn't it? I mean, mm. um, I, I sing in a choir and our choir rehearsals have been on Zoom for a few months now, you know, so, but it's not everybody that, that's um, going to be familiar with it. But like you say, it will grow. Mm. Yeah, because it's like I'm not uh, worried about having a a huge audience or anything like that. It's more like a, a genuine sort of like 
no, but from the things you've said to me in comments and things, I think you would really like it. Do you know what I mean? It's like a very, like, it's coming from a genuine place. Like, it's um, mm -hmm. it's not that I want some huge audience or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the sort of like a smaller group here could actually be an advantage in, in some ways. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just sort of more like curious. But um, like you say, uh sort of if if you keep things real which is something i've always tried to do um yeah you, you just you just see how it goes um but i guess like i've got a little bit rattled over these last uh few months um you know since lord of the rings got taken down um my, my channel e is um uh, struggling like in comparison to how how things were going uh back in like june or, or whatever um and uh it like things were like looking like they were sort of like turning up uh around halloween time and then things sort of like have been like fading in towards uh christmas and the new year um and i'm tr i'm trying to keep a uh, sort of a long a long-term perspective and um yeah there's all sorts of different things on my mind but um it's easy when you're when you're just a team of one to um to, so to, to sort of like get concerned about things i suppose that you sort of like um you can worry be worried that like you're doing something wrong or you know what i mean that it like and that, that people will drift and you see, you know what i mean it's it's i just sort of like want to um uh, well despite your worries i feel like the content that you've been making has been getting better and better so yeah. and like especially also now with sherlock holmes like the atmosphere there and i love the piano music at the start mm. i think um there's something really special happening and yeah despite your worries it's actually from content it's great and this immersive experience with sherlock is one of the best that i've experienced yes the audio escapes is wonderful hmm. well, that's very that's very nice to hear you're always hmm. trying different things steve you're never uh, going stale you're always pushing yourself and trying different things um, and the content, like you're saying, is just getting better and better. Hmm. The mark of a successful person is someone who pushes the boundaries and tries new things hmm. and is constantly trying to improve. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. And I mean, I mean oh, sorry. losing the Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter was a blow, obviously, in many ways, but it did make you look at, at other things. Um, hmm. You know, like Dracula has been superb. Um, your animal farm, I keep seeing, is is growing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I've enjoyed so many of those things, um, Jekyll and Hyde, um, and I'm loving the Little Princess. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they're very wide ranging. The things you know, you know, because you've had to, you know, you could have just been bashing out Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings, which was superb. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved it. But you, you branched out in in all sorts of different ways. Yeah, it's tricky to know what to to work on, and and obviously I do miss those. Um, more modern pieces uh they're very accessible um and often more relatable you know if, if you're reading something that was written in the last 10 or 20 years or even with lord of the rings you know more like 50 years or so um they obviously can feel much more accessible than something written 120 140 or more uh years ago so um yeah i can uh, I, I can miss that um and you know you sort of like hope that you're doing the classics uh justice and that people are interested um and i was encouraged with the 
and still am very encouraged with the feedback on Dracula. That was a, a real, uh, that was a real good one because uh, mm-hmm. that really started as a, as a sort of little side project whilst trying to, uh, you know, things had been a bit stressful in my personal life and um, it was it was like a little way of uh, just getting going after a little bit of a break and a lot of changes and things um, before I delved back into Lord of the Rings and you know I like I read the first chapter of book two on a few live streams to like warm me up and then I uh, I got uh, I got stuck into it and everything but yeah Dracula was a surprise success actually and I'm um, yeah trying to like I said keep that long term uh, head on and uh, sort of like let, let's see how things are in May and June you know I will have finished a little princess and a study in Scarlet by then um, and just sort of like yeah see what piques people's interests and one thing I have become very aware of as well is that you know the, the quality of something uh, you know sort of like the quality of the content that you feel you're producing and the amount of views or whatever don't correlate <laughs> you know what i mean like there are so many factors involved but it can be a bit um disheartening if uh if you feel like you you've done a good job with it and then not many people watch it you know what i mean it, it's 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 tricky it's tricky but um yeah i feel like a study in scarlet and a little princess have got off to a good start mm. you. <laughs> so you know you've just got to sort of like believe in what you're making and um uh it was nice doing the scrooge of bitcoin as well by the way uh that that official audiobook that i i produced um around halloween mm. time um it was a it was a book for an author that like i i knew that it wasn't going to be a, a top seller or anything like that but um that was actually the first um sorry if if you know this but like it was the it was the first audio book project rather than maybe just like a little voice acting thing or something but it's the first audio book project that i've actually been paid for uh so that that was like quite a that was a little milestone you know you've got to sort of pat yourself on the back for that (laughs) because those things for audible that i've made in the past they were commission only uh so you're only getting paid on sales basically um as this was the first project that i actually got approached by the author we negotiated a pay which i was very happy with um and it's uh that's just nice you know you you can sort of like you can really take yourself seriously i think when uh someone comes to you and says hey i think you're worth this and you know i've got like a, a a working fee in mind and those sorts of things um so that that felt very reassuring but i'm still not quite re- quite sure as to professional directions in the future and stuff like that and at the end of the day i just i just really like the youtube thing like you as people uh, i know it sounds really cheesy and I, you know I, I have said these things many times but like like it, it just it really wouldn't be the same without like me you know what i'm saying it like it's like that there are human beings out there um enjoying what you do and being sort of like part of a little community around you is just really awesome it's it's completely different like making something for audible for example you know making a professional audiobook somewhere or whatever you don't get any of that like you don't you just like send it off into the internet and wave it goodbye and um that's it really you don't get the engagement yeah and it's not that it's it's not like like oh i want cheerleaders or something it's like the actual feeling of uh sort of uh being a part of someone's life like you know you've got this like because it feels two way to me even though like i said uh uh, like a live stream it is one way in the terms of it's my face and i'm talking at you and you're just in the chat sort of thing but um yeah that was what really inspired me in the beginning when i first started getting you know i've told you about the potato party thing you know in the live streams before this uh 
guy called Potato Party who was basically the first person to comment on my uh, Hobbit stuff like years back um, where I, when I only had three chapters uh, on YouTube and he said like this is really great I'm a bit sad that there's only three chapters and I'd actually finished recording the whole thing but I just hadn't put it on and I didn't know what I was doing but um, just like having like whoa hello fellow human being it was just that like interaction uh, around the world I just thought was really magnificent and getting to know people with and like having this like sort of common interest I don't know I've just always found the whole thing very 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 fascinating in a different way to um, if I was working in a production team and going to a studio and you're really worried about sales and marketing and trying to sell a product to someone and do you, do you get me it's like a totally different ball game Steven, to that you sort. just described why we have a fox family <laughs> yeah i was i was thinking earlier today like why like why do i enjoy the channel and it was also what you'd said earlier about uh you like reading to people you you that whole thing but the thing is a normal audiobook you know that whoever recorded it wasn't thinking about you at all mm. and you are actually reading to us mm, mm, and that's mm. different i feel yeah but i do often like i genuinely do often think that like i i think of certain um because this is this was the thing that was like drawing me into zoom obviously it was to try and like take it up a, a level um because like um i do have names in my mind do you know what i mean like when i when i'm like producing something or like thinking of what to read maybe or trying thinking of certain idea or when i'm actually sharing the video or waiting for the premiere and things like this like i often and stuff on discord and like i often think like oh i hope so and so likes this or whatever do you know what i mean and i like when i see certain people commenting um you know i feel like i do know you in a certain way do you know what i mean it, it's it's really it's really special like um yeah so it's like you said like when someone's making a professional audiobook it's not for an individual and that's something i've always been a bit worried about is like doing what i'm doing feeling like a job i know that's a real privilege like, i know I'm, I'm like insanely privileged to say that um like everybody want i don't know i'm making generalizations i was going to say like everybody wants to work with a passion that maybe that's not even true but um yeah i know i'm spoiled to be able to have the you know disclaimer i've got very many interests and and very many things that I've thought that I could try and work with over the years or whatever, but to have sort of stumbled into something that um, I seem to do quite well with. And I'm like, uh, yeah, learning all the time, trying to develop um, and that I'm actually genuinely passionate about and get to interact with people all around the world. It is like a very, it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing. It's a cool thing. And I think Steve, you come, you come across as yourself. I mean, I'm your mum, so I know that what mm. you know, what you see is what you get. And I think that's why you connect with people all over the place, in all ages, and uh, different parts of the world, because you do make people feel um, that you're, you're you're a friend. And you know, like Shannon says, it's a fox family. And I think that uh, was Teresa, was it? Was it Teresa that said it? Was Teresa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did I say? Jesse, yes. Yeah, you were saying <laughs> about the Fox family. And oh, it's, yeah. It's true. And that's a very special quality, I think. And, and like, not everybody has to be in the Fox family or anything. You know what I mean? It's not like a weird cult. You know, like, every, like, I'm really aware that, like, everybody engages with things, like, in completely different ways. And that's one of the things, actually, that I really love about the whole YouTube thing as well, is that you can digest it however you want. It's really cool. There's, like, a lot of layers to it. That's, like, one thing with online content creation and everything that I really like is that you can build all these layers. Like, it's not, like, Audible, for example, there's the audiobook, 
you can leave a review and that's it like interaction end as with youtube you can be completely anonymous you know you you can just you don't even need to have an account but you can browse videos on youtube you don't leave any mark at all like you don't have to like it you don't have to sign in you don't have to comment you don't have to be anything at all but you can still interact in a sense you know what i mean you're consuming the thing and the content creator sort of gets the view you know they get the watch time like there's like a a trackable engagement which you don't get with audible either it's like very hard to really see how it's been consumed and things as youtube they've done a very good job i know youtube gets a lot of crap but the concept i think is really good and um they do have a very good uh youtube uh they call it studio so like the creator dashboard um i think is very good in many ways i think we get very spoiled like people complain about things all the time i think it's very good um you you can really see you can see people as numbers if you want but you can really see people as people as well like you get this sort of feedback um but yeah people can be sort of like a ghost or you can just do the minimum and like like something maybe leave a comment you know you can subscribe um or you can actually get really involved <laughs> um and that's what's so cool about like when i discovered patreon um and things like discord or if you want to take things over to facebook if you want to take things over to instagram if you want to take things over to zoom you know what i'm saying there's just like so many levels uh to this whole thing which is really fascinating um and it can be scary as well like it can be very intimidating as well like um how close do you get like what things do you choose to use or not use and you know you're not sure if you're doing it properly and you know all these sorts of things there's no rules uh and if you've no colleagues you're not in a team or whatever you sometimes you just feel like you're being blown around in the wind and just sort of hoping it's working and okay and, and that's why you've got to have the sort of joy for it or it's just never gonna it's never gonna work but equally, it's a balancing act because if you are putting an awful lot of time into something, uh, of course, there's a lot of um, sort of hobbyists on YouTube. And I used to work part time alongside YouTube. And uh, like, you know, technically at the moment, I probably should. <laughs> uh, I probably should work part time alongside this. Uh, there's been moments where I was sort of like, ooh, this is going places. Um, and then there's other times where you're sort of like, oh, I'm just clinging on. Uh, like, can I justify this as a full time thing? You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, the world uh, only revolves with money, with money, it seems. So you do have to be concerned about those things, too, of course. Like, is it is it uh, financially viable? Is it financially stable to invest 40 hours a week in something or more or whatever you've you know whatever you can give it that week or whatever um yeah <laughs> um like I, I i feel like i should do more live streams i feel like i've um uh uh like uh, gone back on promises there sometimes but but sometimes it you know, it can be nerves as well. You know, it is scary live streaming. Um, like, you know, putting yourself out there, sat in front of a of a camera. Um, yeah, it, it, it can be that. And you don't want to do a bad job as well. I think that's the thing, like with my content, I'm like, um, I am a bit of a perfectionist. I know, I guess we can all say that to some extent, but I do really care, right? Uh, I won. I put. A, I. I really put my heart into stuff. So when you sort of wear your heart on your sleeve in that regard, you don't want to do a crappy live reading. 
uh, and people have always never been done a crappy live. No, but like people you're are like really, really reassuring with that, Ah, uh, at the same time, you tend to you at the same time you tend to edit things into non-existence. I don't even know what you mean by that, Shannon. I think I think I'm a you over edit. <laughs> I, how do I over edit that? I, like it is a it's a it is a balancing act is editing as well. Like especially if you prefer the the more raw style of of things, um, you can make things too uh, polished. I guess it's, it's yeah, uh, too it's polished, so... too clean. It takes all the warmth out of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know what you mean, though. I do know what you mean. Um, it's tricky because like when you're learning new skills as well, it can get quite addictive um you know you're trying to always get better like whatever better means or you know what i mean like you learn new like little tricks like sort of thing like um but uh but that is all that has been especially a bit of a while ago that was something i was a bit concerned about actually i think it was bef around the time that i started dracula actually that I was sort of like i hope i'm not losing some of the the you know what i mean the 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 je ne sais quoi <laughs> uh that was there in the beginning uh so that dracula was quite fun to do because i i consciously tried to go back with this like raw reading thing you know actually i picked up the book rather than using an online like a pdf ebook whatever which is better for narrating it's easier and cleaner um but I thought no, but like let's try and go back to the Secret Garden Hobbit feel, feel the pages in my hand and like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, in the Secret Garden, what you also did often was at the end of the chapter you'd have a little comment about it, like, oh, that was not really nice, or, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I don't think you're doing that anymore, um, but that also really kind of reinforced the whole I'm being read to thing. Like you get to the end of the chapter and, you know, you actually comment on, oh, okay, yeah, that's interesting. And then, you know, you move on to the next thing. Um, and I think those bits, I, I, I don't think you've had them for a while. Yeah, um, I've, I've brought it back with a little princess. Did I not uh, notice it? I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a little princess is... Um, like I sometimes have like a little outro, uh, like Lord of the Rings, all those chapters, they have an outro. Um, like I, I say certain stuff. Um, it's like sometimes the Lord of the Rings ones were quite chatty. Like maybe I was talking a bit about, oh, Gandalf, this or whatever, you know, like I or maybe reflected a little bit on um, uh, my thought process on like, oh, how did I, what was I thinking when I was tackling the Council of Elrond? And uh, like, I, there was a bit where I was chatting a bit about like Legolas's voice choice and like the um, how I was tackling the uh, the Wood Elves and people were not sure about this a bit like Slavic influenced accent and stuff like that. So I was, yeah, with Lord of the Rings, I was I was doing that, um, but with Dracula, I purposely didn't just because I didn't want to detract from the atmosphere of the book. That was my thought process there. Mm -hmm. uh, and also it's because I want to try different things. So I didn't want to get formulaic. So like with, um, with Harry Potter, because um, some things on my channel are not presented how they were originally, um, because I've had those old channels deleted and then I've re-uploaded things. And sometimes I've edited them when re-uploading either to polish them up for a certain reason to try and make them more fitting with the content that I'm making at that time or to uh, make them more relevant so like sometimes in the introduction or the outro it might be a bit outdated like the stuff that I'm talking about you know I might be reflecting on something that I'd said at the time maybe in a different video that was like two years ago. So it didn't feel right to like upload those things that don't really make sense anymore. Um, and also uh, complete audiobooks, like with the intro and outro all cut out. Um, and a long time ago, when I started testing, uh, putting music uh, before and in between, um, those 
uh, are generally sort of better for the channel. Uh, if you know what I mean, like you, you get very good watch time because the videos are so long, uh, which can help to place your video higher up in the YouTube search algorithms and things like that, which can actually help to bring people to your channel and actually make the whole thing work, you see. So sometimes like the individual short chapters, they sort of don't do very well, if you know what I mean, even if I can quite like the formula. So with Secret Garden, uh, again, sorry for the couple of you that uh, know this already, because Hel Helena, you might not know that, like Secret Garden was originally um, 16 separate videos, uh, like all these other things. Um, and I actually chatted my head off in those ones. Um, because I like it was when I was going through the first issues with Harry Potter uh, and sort of realizing, oh, I, like this was when I was first um, uh, realizing what copyright was in this regard and how it works and how different it was to like the music industry and other things. And um, I was like, oh, OK, I should probably do um, a classic. That should be OK. Um, and I had The Secret Garden on this same shelf with like nine books with Harry Potter on um, that my dad had said that I should take over to Sweden and read and who knows you might want to put it on your channel at some point um, so uh, I thought um, like there was quite a few chatty people on Patreon at the time and and um, someone had said something like um Oh, your your channel, I think because I did these, I always did these introductions, like with Harry Potter, I'd be sort of like, hello there, um, and welcome back to my reading of J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like I'd do that like little thingy, and then a little goodbye, and that's where I started this read to you soon thing. Um, and someone said, oh, it reminds me of, um, of like radio plays, or uh, like it's certain types of old fashioned broadcasting where you really do feel that there's a person behind the thing, you know. Like there's when a... they did War of the Worlds on the radio. Yeah, that sort of thing, exactly. So you very much, you've got a presenter and then there's content and there's chat and you get this like mingly old fashioned, it's not always been old fashioned, obviously, but like now, like a sort of old fashioned concept. Um, and someone was saying, oh, it really reminds me of that sort of thing. And I thought, okay, well, if I'm pausing Harry Potter at the time and trying to figure all this out, um, I need to sort of, uh, it's, a, it's sort of an excuse to try something a little bit different. So I thought I'll try and take the intro outro thing to a next level sort of thing. Uh, and I wasn't really sure if it would work, but I thought I'll just have a little ramble uh, before the reading. Uh, tried to keep editing at an absolute minimum so I would only edit out edit out an actual mistake and not really and you know I didn't re-record things over and over again and like practice character voices over and over again I just sort of did what came uh, and obviously I was thinking about it more and more and more as the story went on and you get really into it but originally it was very much just open the book read it um, and then I thought I'll try and do two chapters a video roughly with the secret garden. So I finished the chapter and I literally was just sort of like, Oh, that was a very nice chapter. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, Oh, Dickon is so, is so sweet. Um, and maybe just mentioned something that came into my head. And then I was sort of like, yeah, I think we've got time for a second chapter. So here's chapter 13. And then I went into that. And then there was a little chat at the end. Um, but um, with this uh, newest channel, um, like I said, those intros and outros, this whole raw reading thing, it just felt, it felt outdated. Um, it had been a couple of years since I'd made those. The intros and outros, they just didn't feel relevant anymore. Uh, and I knew that these complete audiobooks things sort of worked better in some senses so um i cut all the intros and outros out added the music 
but I didn't want to lose like exactly what you're saying, Helena. I didn't want to completely lose that genuine sort of being read to a bit cozy thing. Um, that is highly distracting, Pepper Fox. Um, um, so I didn't want to lose it completely. So I kept in a few of those um, little bits. So they were very intentionally placed, if you know what I mean. That was like an editing job from the original thing. Um, but when I was listening back to that over very many hours, editing up that complete audiobook of Secret Gun, um, they were just like little genuine bits where I thought, that's nice. I think people appreciate that. That's nice. You know what I mean? It, it just felt real because it was real. So even though I was editing it now to make this complete audiobook, all those comments were real comments, like from the time that felt really genuine. There was like nothing scripted at all. So, um, and same with that chat at the end, like that like little reflection, even though I edited that in time with the music, that was like a like genuine, like little reflection that I had when I finished the book, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, uh, that sort of feedback, Helena and Shannon, it, it is really important. Um, uh, and so, yeah, that was what I was trying to do with the little princess was sort of like get back there. Um, but uh, like I said, even with Lord of the Rings and with Narnia, because um, that line, the witch in the wardrobe, that's uh, presented in five parts. But again, that was made in multiple videos and I've just stuck it together. And I don't think I did a very good job because I knew I was going to make the proper complete audiobook, but then I had to take that down. So yeah it's a it's like it's a process there's like there's lots of things involved but with uh Sherlock Holmes again it's like one of those things like you're sort of like uh you're trying to create an atmosphere so I don't want to introduce that um and you be aware that it's Stephen Garnett reading to you because I'm trying to sort of set the scene like a tv show almost um and I can chat a little bit afterwards. That's okay. Uh, but um, again, when I make the complete audiobook of that, I'm going to just strip it down like I did with Dracula, I think, because I'm trying to set the mood. But you're so right, though, both of you, like with saying, um, uh, and Mama Fox has mentioned it as well, it's like, it's those details that not everybody will appreciate because I've had a lot of negative comments over the years uh, about those sorts of things that people like you really like. So it's, it's tricky. Do you know what I mean? Like some people are like, you wouldn't believe how many comments I've had where people are like, will you shut up and just read the book? It's crazy. Um, and when I was new to this, those hurt, those sort of comments really hurt. Uh, they can make you really like doubt what you're doing. And, and even if you have 20 people that say something nice, uh, one like quite cutting, you know, I've had people say like, please never sing again. Like your singing voice is awful. Uh, like, you know, sort of like, oh, you're no Rob Inglis, leave it to the professionals. You know, these sorts of things like that was to do with The Hobbit, for example. He was a They're narrator. They're trolls of the Hobbit. and they can sod off. <laughs> yeah sure but yeah they they stick with you these sorts of uh comments it's it's stupid how much um especially when it is actually directly uh formed on a particular thing that you've done or said like it doesn't hurt as much like um and things do bounce off me more now than they did three years ago obviously but like someone the other day just said on dracula what an awful voice or what a terrible voice but like that doesn't bother me anymore in the same way. Like I do remember negative comments more than positive comments, which is silly, really. It just seems to be how the human mind works. But um, those sorts of things, they're not personal. It's just like, what an awful voice. It's like, all right, what an awful face. <laughs> no, but it's just silly. It just doesn't mean anything. But if someone's sort of like, oh, you're a Tom Bombadil sounds like a pervert, you know, that sort of thing like you're like oh. they target something specific 
yeah and like that's not a quote but like because i don't want to like say something like that it, uh, but like there are those like those sorts of comments you're like oh yeah they, it like stings in a in a different way and especially if it's something that you've been a bit self-conscious about like the singing for example or something like that like oh you're murdering these songs oh, yeah so a, a bully always knows where to hit they always take something mm. just particular enough to get you so yeah yeah. yeah it's it's so true it's so true um and you know that it just says more about that particular individual like they're either having a really bad day or they're not a very happy person and that's why they think they want to you know bash the keyboard and say something mean you know it makes them feel better in that little moment you know um but yeah when when you just one person uh that sort of director, producer, editor, voice actor, marketer, and you know what I mean? Like you're all the things. Um, and you just sort of like hope that you're doing a decent job. Those uh, things can really wobble you. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. But yeah, I'm just, uh, it's, this is just like a long way of saying that like, um, there's generally a reason is that a new person joining or is yeah um there's generally um a reason why like th th there's always a reason <laughs> there's always a reason in my head at the moment as to like why i've approached a thing in a certain way but it doesn't mean it's worked and it doesn't mean that everybody's gonna like it you know what i mean like some people would prefer certain things to other things and i'm always just trying to be be real and if I think like something I've always told myself was like, if I'm happy in the very moment that I sort of click publish, then that's okay. Like, you know what I mean? If you can sort of like justify what you were sort of doing in that moment, that's okay. Like you're not always, uh, like in retrospect, you can always criticize things and critique things and, uh, there's going to be things that people like more than others and and all the rest of it but I think if you like believe in the the product at that moment where you send it off sort of thing you know what I mean when it like floats off then that's okay so I think. Mm. But, uh, I'm gonna sorry. turn into a pumpkin in like two minutes time so <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> say goodbye yeah absolutely. i, I tend to fall asleep at like eight o'clock at night so this is quite late for me <laughs> oh, oh. It's, been, uh, yeah. it's been super nice to have you genuinely helena yeah i'm glad i joined um you guys still have fun and then steven thanks for this it was really great um try not to let your perfectionism get the best of you um coming from a recovering <laughs> perfectionist um yeah uh, you're doing a great job and yeah just yeah keep having fun and we'll be we'll be listening to you soon <laughs> just now <laughs> thank Bye. you Elena. that's it's very very kind thank you good everyone take care see you in a bit yes that's why you have foxy cheerleaders <laughs> they're a bonus they're a bonus um I had a rough day someone left me a mean comment okay stay first we go after that person second we tell steven how great he is <laughs> then, yes when people on. are mean to you you tell us and then the foxy army will come and attack <laughs> no I but the, in those claws yeah yeah no but we the, shown but the the um the sort of constructive criticism and feedback like i know i don't always take things uh very well because it, it is difficult like you know receiving criticism is difficult um but i i always think on things and i always value things like they all go into the into the mix do you know what i mean like everything that's like said like whatever sort of type of feedback it is it all goes into the mix so i i value it very much because like um it's it's really great being told how good you are sure but um you want you don't believe it 
uh, until you get different sides of the story and and like you know deeper levels of feedback and um so like with that thing shannon like i genuinely didn't know what you meant when you said like you edit things into thin air like i thought you were just uh teasing but if if you if you mean that in a sense that you act it's like a way of saying that you prefer the more raw sort of concept then then that is actually more valuable feedback than i realized if you if you know what i mean um, maybe is, i think what she was trying to say at least at least from my perspective what she was trying to say is that you put too much pressure on yourself and that your work is good in quality and you don't need to edit it to death because it's already that good yes that too <laughs> Yeah, I, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah, but like we've reflected on as well, um, how useful it is to experiment with all sorts of uh, different things as well. You know what I mean? Like if if I was only kicking out um, sort of secret garden styled uh, readings, or if I was always presenting things in the same way every time, you don't you don't improve you don't develop and um and i'd get bored as well you know what i mean so it's very important to uh, to diver to, to diversify and to challenge yourself and stay creative do you know what i mean you know what i mean shall we go to bed it's um it's midnight Swedish time. I think this has been absolutely lovely. Um, I think Lynette's fallen asleep in the in the bottom left hand corner of my screen, Lady Bookworth, because <laughs> she's in India. So it must be about five in the morning or something. So I think she's. Oh, I I are actually commented. I didn't notice that. Um, they said sorry at work an hour ago. Oh, but because I don't know who IR is actually, but um, like I said, um, like I, I, I thought from the very beginning that it was absolutely fine if people wanted to just uh, spectate. I think it's super nice. Um, have I missed anything in the chat that I should have engaged with if anybody noticed something? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, but I was struggling to um, to to watch that little bit of the chat as well. I was just too conscious of the of the webcam streams and things. Um, you try and focus on too much at once. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> no, but um, Mama Fox, Papa Fox, are you going to say good night? It's eleven o'clock over there. Yeah, thank you, son. It's been really good. Sorry, I had to go do a bit of work, uh, uh, but uh, so I missed a wee bit. Uh, but it's been fantastic, and listening to the your fans and what they've had to say, all very, all very constructive. Uh, Tearing, by the way, on IR. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah. Um, I wonder so, if that. Yeah, fantastic. Really great, and lovely to see you. Uh, Fantastic. I think that's my new patron, actually. Erin? Uh, Erin, yeah. Because um, I've only got one Erin on Patreon. Like, there's certain names that are more common than others, obviously. But um, I think that must be my new patron that just joined a couple of days ago, actually. So uh, that's really nice. That's really nice. Sorry to interrupt you, Papa Fox. Well, it's, it's been really lovely from uh, my point of view as well because some of the people on the screen tonight yeah. I've spoken to lots of times yeah. um, nice. on Discord and on book clubs and chats and various things. So it's really nice to put a face to the, to, the, uh, to the person. It's lovely. Definitely. Yeah. And it's been nice just to, to chat on Zoom in, in 
you know, a nice sort of informal way, but you've managed to cover lots and lots of things. And it's nice for you to be able to bounce them off somebody because like you've made the point, you know, you are kind of a one man band in many ways. And it's just nice to hear, you know, people's yeah, point I, of view. And, and that sort of, uh, that isolation has only been exaggerated over the last, 12 or 14 yeah. months as well of course Absolutely. you know what I mean like uh, yeah. doing this sort of bedroom work at home work is already quite isolated so then when you throw COVID in um yeah. it just it just exaggerates and then with me moving away from Stockholm as well into this little town you know that I've been joking about like that also makes a difference so, and and yeah. needing to work around someone as well like even someone as uh understanding and as supportive as Maria you know we're still in like a one and a half small one and a half bedroom small apartment uh you know and she's working and studying 150 percent uh and then i'm there too you know i mean it's it's yeah and th that's that's always been one of the factors with live streams as well you know what i mean like when i say like uh i like there's nerves there's not wanting to do a bad job but there's also needing to be conscious of working around uh, somebody else as well so it is mm. it is tricky but that yeah that was what i sort of hope would be really nice with the zoom thing um was to just help help to make you people <laughs> in my brain you know because you've always been you've always been people obviously and like i've loved uh chatting with you uh the, all, all the time but um like you said shannon like uh, just a text text chat it's it's not the same as as like uh voice voice and video and all that sort of thing mm. Mm. planning on doing these once a month yeah that's that's the minimum that's the minimum i know i can be really crap uh sometimes with uh sort of stick into the promises and it's not because like I'm trying to be crap it's <laughs> uh there can be lots of lots of factors involved um there can be lots of factors involved um but um like I I honestly think this concept sort of deserves more than once a month but sometimes I think I can be over optimistic with things I think that's sometimes why I fail in my promises is because I I I want the thing and I'm optimistic but then you sort of end up putting too much pressure on yourself and other things come up and then you're just defeated yeah. you're spreading you... yourself too thin yeah can't yeah those sorts of things and and there's and life gets in the way you know what I mean there's like there's other things in your world some things that you don't even expect and um and then you if you put sort of pressure on yourself like oh i said i was going to do that thing and then you don't do the thing and then it can make it harder to do the thing uh you know what i mean it's like it's um yeah so uh, with this thing i'll say that it's once a month um and that's like a very doable thing you know yeah. what I mean? And if it like spontaneously comes up uh, to do it more, then wonderful. But let, let's try and make that basis of like once a month. Would it, would it help to have it the same, sort of like roughly the same time, like the last Saturday or Sunday of the month or something? Well, that would definitely work with a scheduling, but at the same time, at you, honey, you seem to... To me, you seem to be so focused on your fans as being people, the Fox family as being actual people to you. You forget that you are an actual people. <laughs> You're trying, you pull yourself in too many different directions, put way too much pressure on yourself. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fair enough, Shannon. It's fair enough. I think it's very true. Very true. Mm -hmm. Um, I, mean, but that... I was just going to say weekends are probably quite popular for most people because, you know, more yeah. spare time, let's say. 
Yeah, I think especially with time zones as well, because it, it is yeah. the weekend for a lot of people, although obviously people do work and have other commitments on weekends. Yeah. But as a general rule, people are going to have a bit more space regardless of time. So, um, but I think that's what I'll do is like, I'll make a post on YouTube and Patreon at some point saying um, uh, how lovely this was and schedule it for... Uh, I still just don't know between Saturday or Sunday, loosely but schedule. what are you saying, China? Loosely schedule. Don't loosely put too much pressure on yourself. Yeah, but that's what I mean. If I if I pencil it in for the last weekend in February, like the 27th, 28th, and then closer to the time, I can just figure out which is better out mm -hmm. of Saturday and Sunday or something like that. Yeah. No matter how many or how few of these you do, we will still be your fans. We're not going to say, oh, he's not here. Okay, let's kick him off to the corner and find somebody else to follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like people do do that, though, Shanna. <laughs> but then, like you've said before and other people have said before, it's like, well, you're better off without that person anyway. Like if they, if they just flake off because you, you know what I mean? You know, yeah. And 30,000 subscribers is not to be sniffed at, is it, Shannon? No, it's not. Especially in how long has this new channel been going? Like, I... uh, yeah, it, since June of last year. Uh, sorry, for you. For, so, in less yeah. than a year. Come on. No, 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 like, um, uh, not it's like not not even it's about a year and a half about a yeah, year and a half a it's and not half. bad it's not bad Thirty thousand subscribers in about a year and a half is not yeah, affordable yeah yeah well, yeah maybe. yeah yeah absolutely 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 yeah yeah and while well, yes it is a pretty decent fan base at the same time with the book clubs the discord and now the zoom the occasional zoom calls it feels like a much more intimate fan base Mm. If I'm coming across correctly, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely, Sean. yeah, 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 absolutely. Like, I do you think, um, yeah, no, I was gonna just like mention the live streams in general, but like you said, don't put pressure on yourself. It that, and like to be fair, that's how I've been trying to go into uh, the new year, actually. Like, I'm not really one for new year's resolutions and everything, but. Um, with how I was feeling just before Christmas um, and it has been a very odd year um, which affects you in all sorts of different ways that was one thing that I was actually settling on uh, so I have been approaching things a little bit different in January to how I have uh, for quite a long time and that is sort of to do with um, uh, pressure and trying to get a bit sort of um, ahead of myself basically like um making a little bank of things that I'm working on rather than always um, uh, like uh, finishing and sharing and finishing and sharing and finishing and sharing. You know, I'm trying to get a bit more intelligent with uh, with the process and it worked really well in January. Um, so I think basically like the calmer I feel, the less pressure I put on myself, the smoother things should go just naturally, right? You know, so... I think so, Steve. And I mean, you, you are just one person and you're doing all of the activities yourself, you know. So I don't... don't um, Sell yourself short. Yeah, don't overburden yourself because I'm sure that people don't want you to do that. Yeah, those people that matter, like, like we've said, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because like the is, is great and it's quality and it's varied. Um, you know, beyond that, I, I don't think you can do a, a lot more. Yeah, um, I guess it's just it's sort of like an odd field that I'm working with, you know, like uh, with the whole copyright situation and stuff like that. It is an odd, um, yeah, it is an, it is an odd thing. You, you get what I mean? It's a bit different to making, um, 
uh, like fitness videos or or lifestyle vlogs or um, even for music creators and things like that. Um, and some people that use um, film uh, for like parody videos and things like that. That was another thing that absolutely baffled, with, baffled me with copyright because um, I follow a channel um, called Aura and Oral Notes. Um, and their main concept is using snippets from films like Star Wars or Transformers, like The Hobbit, like blockbuster, super famous films that help to grab attention, right? Like you see Star Wars, you see like people are going to want to click it. Um, and then they do their own voiceovers for things and the remix stuff and add music it's really cool like very they're very intelligent a couple of guys that do it and there's a bit of a team as well very good at editing good voice actors funny they do like their own little uh like voice sorry like uh, lip sync things with alternate things that the characters could say like make a completely different storyline in a star wars scene you know like they're talking about getting wasted and having cocktails or something like instead of talking about jedis or whatever you know what i mean it's just just very amusing done very well but you know when i followed channels like that and you see musicians doing covers of beyonce and all these things you know like uh like i was it just baffled me that you know that i couldn't read harry potter or something you get me it's like so it is a bit of a a niche concept what i'm doing on youtube like i'm it's audiobooks audiobooks are not the most youtube friendly content and i think that's one uh battle that i've always had that then can that can then um uh just like make it harder to do what you do and and know that you're doing the right thing because it feels like you don't quite fit in to the box do you know what I mean? Like, I, I can't just do whatever I want. <laughs> and sometimes you sort of feel that, like, um, am I actually supposed to be doing this? You know what I mean? It's like you're not a, like, you're primarily an audio thing. Um, you've got to be very careful with what you record um, rather than being uh, like a video lifestyle showing you how to use your microwave or cook a great lasagna or whatever um yeah so that i think that's why i can feel extra wobbly like i know i am a sensitive person and all the rest of it but i think you know the fact that my content has created has um received a lot of negative attention from these big publishing companies and realizing that you've got to dance around this whole copyright thing and now realizing that I just have to avoid it completely. Um, and uh, yeah, the fact that it's primarily audio rather than video based and um, you sometimes think like, am, am I in the wrong place? Like, am I doing this right? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you, you get what I'm saying, I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it that you get what I'm saying. <laughs> I think all of us are thinking. Yeah. <laughs> but it is a it is a puzzler, as um as they said in this last Sherlock Holmes chapter. because uh, because audio yeah, audiobooks are just they're just a bit different on YouTube. They it feels... straddle the line. Sorry, Shannon. They straddle the line between they do. Mm. read between books and literature and covers because like yeah. you're doing your own cover of a book so it straddles the line exactly exactly but mm. i will bring up one thing because one of my well my other two patron people i patron they're both musicians and i had this conversation with the two italian guys and they said that while they do do covers, they still have to pay a portion of their what they make from YouTube and Patreon to the royalties. Okay. So they do have to pay for that at the same time. Okay. Is, I wonder, is that a new thing, I wonder? or 
I didn't ask that, yeah. but they do have to pay for using the song and doing the cover of the song. But I guess the good thing there is that it, it sounds like it's possible, because that's one thing I've noticed with music is that it's generally possible to purchase rights as you can't do that with books. Like they won't let you purchase the rights. You know, it's like the, the copyright law is different. It's obviously been written longer ago originally or whatever but but you know what I mean like the the music that I use for my audiobooks you know I can I can uh, join a website like epidemic epidemic sound or whatever there are others out there and you can license things through that and just in general like the music industry seems more willing to allow you to pay royalties to use music like how it's used how music is used in tv and film but books are a bit different. Like you, if you approach a big publishing company, say, "Hey, I'm wanting to make an audio book for for Fantastic Mr. Fox," they'll just say no because it, it's a different world. It like it seems to give too much away. It must be to do, you know, it must be to do with the type of medium. You know, like a song is three minutes long. It's like it's very sellable. It must be you, you get what I'm, you, yeah. You're like um, as with the book. It's like they seem to view it that you're making the book obsolete, like that you don't you don't need books anymore. If um, if someone can just make their own audio book, it's like it, they feel like they sort of like they're losing their product. Yeah, can see where you're coming from. You know. Because like if if they sell the rights to me to make my own Roald Dahl book, like it's not really the same as using the song. It's like it's it's like it's such a small such a the song's so small. <laughs> it's like it's just it's just it confuses me. But you you just like see how the different mediums and probably why the there's money is at the heart of it all. Of course, like. Uh, what is good for business what is bad for business um using the song is positive for the artist and positive for the label because it gets the song out there like it seems like help to distribute the song as the with audiobooks it's like yeah the book is no longer required because you've got someone listening to it that's how you've got someone reading it and listening to it and if, you, if you're enjoying that thing. Um, it may be that, yeah. the audio, that, 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 you know, physical books, eventually, you know, they, they may be afraid that people will go completely digital, which they probably will, let's face it, in another, no, you I know. I don't agree that there'll always be books. Well, the, yeah, we hope so and... Mm. But you know what I mean. Maybe um, mm. the copyright around books might be older and more staid. Yeah, yeah. But it it, it seems to be something because it's like if you look at how they word the little copyright disclaimers in the front of books and things like that. Like I've been worried about even uh, how I present. Um, these public domain books as well because i think technically i shouldn't even have video you know i i'm i'm technically breaking a different copyright law in filming me reading from a little princess so even though the words are public domain that physical book yeah. isn't oh my gosh no but it's it's great you see how different it is like as with a song it's not it's like um it's like yeah the books <laughs> they're the words cannot be replicated if they're copyrighted um yeah it's like it's like you it's like if they sell the rights willy-nilly like i said it's like they're they're um they're losing the grasp on the actual piece of material that makes it unique, which is those words on the paper. Mm. As with music, it's like you can you can reshuffle it 
know what I mean? Like you can sort of like um, remix. interpret it. Huh? Remix. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. You can you can sing the same song fifty different ways, um, but you'll always. It's like it's like the. Mm, it's like it's more malleable. It seems as like with the book. It's it seems to be like the copyright interprets that if a robot reads that or if i read that or if you read that you're sort of um like <laughs> you're 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 you they call it like reproducing i think um knocking your fucks down like that <laughs> no, so. but it but it's like with these physical books it's like like i said you're sort of delving into double copyright because uh, like with Harry Potter you're you're breaking the copyright of um, uh, reproducing those words that are protected and then if you show because this is what I was worried about originally with Harry Potter or something like that um, was um, the image you know I said this for like what I set as the thumbnail or as the uh, background I was worried about sort of stealing pictures like I, I couldn't understand how people could uh take um movie posters or screenshots from films and use that because that's not they didn't make that picture do you get me like just copyright is bananas it's so confusing like they didn't take that picture they've literally just took a screenshot of a film and then set that as a background that, that's not theirs that's why I used to always make my own backgrounds and stuff like really like it or download things that i knew were like for some from some free database or something of you get me because that was what entered my head i was like okay you know that images are copyrighted i didn't make that's why i've always wanted to use my own photographs and things like i often if it's for a community post or something all those pictures are always pictures i've taken myself even though mm -hmm. a lot of people don't do that they take things offline and um but yeah, like with the physical book, even though the words are in the public domain, um, it says things like this. Uh, Penguin supports copyright. We know they do. Copyright fuels. This is, well, I think this is hilarious, to be honest, but it's also very sad. Copyright fuels creativity encourages diverse voices promotes free speech and creates a vibrant culture mm. it's like the opposite of everything i agree mm -hmm. to be honest. uh then it says, yeah and then it says thank you for buying an authorized edition of this book and for complying with copyright laws by not reproducing scanning or distributing any part of it in any form without permission. You are supporting writers and allowing Penguin to continue to publish books for every reader. So it's like the, the book world and the digital world have not crossed over yet. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like the, the book where, world yeah, is still probably. still pre-internet in mm -hmm. the way that they look at things. As the gaming world, the gaming world is completely post-internet. Like you can replicate that game however the flipping hell you want. You know, like all these gaming streamers, yeah, like... gaming content. What was that, Shannon? Language. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah, but it's like, uh, it's just you can tell that like gaming has been birthed out or like into the internet age and has realized that they can thrive through people playing those games, streaming themselves playing those games, commenting on those games. That whole thing fuels their industry and helps them to sell games. But the book world is born very pre-internet um and seems to be struggling to um 
integrate mm. and uh, is seemingly like trying to cling on to the old ways that have founded their publishing mm. empires. You know, there's apparently five publishing companies that uh, basically own the majority of the English books in the world. Could you could you hear me? Or? Yeah. You know, they're referred to as the big five, um, which um, that uh, that company in New York that, you know, it looked like I was going to do that poorly paid uh, job for a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they were sort of um, trying to sell their middleman company on the very fact that it's funny because they actually um, they ba- they based their business model on the very fact that they were working with independent authors and independent audiobook producers but they were trying to sell their company to me also on the basis that they sometimes worked with the big five because it sounds good you know it's like having uh steven spielberg directing your film or something it's like oh sometimes we work with the big names and you know those five companies they're worth like it's like, like like more than ten billion dollars or something. So there's like a major Sometimes monopoly. Sometimes it can also mean once every five years. What did you say, Shannon? Sometimes can also mean once every five years. Mm. Yeah. Once every five years. That they might work yeah. with big five. Oh. You know. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it but it sounds good. Um, but yeah, it's like with with Disney and and these uh, companies that are just buying up the rights to everything. Um, That is how the book world has operated. Like when I, when I looked into Harper Collins for the first time, when they um, removed my fantastic Mr. Fox, you know, where I was just reading from the book. um, It was only on there a couple of weeks. Um, And I know I sound very bitter when I say this, but you know, when there's, there's channels out like there's a, there's still a YouTube channel out there that's, doing very well with an awful lot of views. And he only makes Roald Dahl audiobooks. He reads from the books, like he shows the book on screen. He's only doing Roald Dahl. And he's still there. I don't understand like how he's not being taken down. And it, you know, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, mine lasted about a fortnight and uh i wrote to half collins immediately um and i just got sent into like a loop of customer service emails never actually got to speak to anybody you know that and those strikes remained uh and i was looking into like and trying to understand like how i could actually purchase the rights and all these sorts of things and it's it's just not possible and then i was looking at uh (laughs) <laughs> I, I like I saw because they obviously want to brag with how big and successful they are so it's like if you have a browse around the HarperCollins website and like the about us and their history their legacy they're you know these companies they're so proud that they're like a couple of hundred years old and they own everything and they're so rich so they very happily sort of say like uh, we have the rights to uh, you know over a million books or whatever you know including like a thousand of the best sellers out there and it was like you know lord of the rings was involved because it's like a lot of companies share rights to things like they've all got their hands in the little pockets like so it was like lord of the rings was mentioned narnia was mentioned the whole work of roald dahl was mentioned and just so many famous modern authors harper collins is like yep we got those and then like over here there's penguin saying yes we've got all these and then macmillan's over here like oh yes we have all these ones like there's like you know it's 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 sort of tragic um so we will we will see and and that's the thing like um audiobooks have been booming right uh, and the audiobook concept is still quite old. You know, they've been kicking about on cassettes and CDs, but it's booming in a, in a digital form, which opens up a whole new kettle of fish. But this, 
still trying to like hold on to this like there can only be one official reading there can only be one official voice but it's it's just a it's a, yeah it's an odd it's an odd thing it's an odd thing so i i hope there's a day uh, out there where they truly practice what they preach in my opinion and really practice saying uh that we encourage diversity and creativity and open voices and um going. you know what was what was that then i say natalie's on her way i think she's just saying good night oh she was yeah saying good evening um because she she popped in and and popped out um so yeah i i know i'm um it's always it's, like me and Chris are the last ones because we're always <laughs> we're on the east coast. Yeah, it does. It does help. Yeah, it's only six thirty here, Hello. so Hello. We'll keep chatting as long as you want to. Please, <laughs> but at the same time, we want to sleep because we don't want an exhausted fox. So that's fair. <laughs> well, I'm happy. That needs his royal rest. <laughs> I'm happy because I got chapter three of Sherlock Holmes recorded. So, like, I I felt like there was an achievement. I didn't um, want to like that story. I wanted to continue disliking that story, <laughs> Stephen. You're not helping. <laughs> I'm, sorry, Shannon. I'm sorry. Once I get my claws into it, that's it. Yeah. A new favorite. <laughs> yeah. How did yeah. you go, Steve, earlier on? Is it? What, what did you say, sorry? Ma'am. How did your little princess premiere go tonight? Uh, I've... I've not looked at the the figures, um, but uh, when I popped in very late, there was um, there was a healthy little bunch. There was like twenty or so. Uh, One hundred and twenty-two um, views, as far as I can see. Oh, yeah, good. so it it's pretty it's pretty standard for the moment. Is that um, mm -hmm. like um, about the same as the last uh, installment? Mm. um so yeah for for because it, it says like um first two hours 37 minutes um it's ranked five and this is like pretty normal like for my channel at the at the moment like after two hours most videos are in this like 100 to 200 views stage um you know so but this is what i mean like with um you know the viewership compared to in the height of lord of the rings or or uh, harry potter or something um but it's absolutely fine like i'm i'm happy just trucking on at the moment and um at the end of the day i just want to create good quality stuff um yeah, That's true. Where'd they come from? Has he changed his clothes? <laughs> no, this is one of the extra ones. One of the extra ones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, puppy. Is it a substitute? What do you mean, an extra one? We have three. Oh, I didn't realize you had three. When have you and had three, Dad. dog? Lucy. Lucy. I, on, I only know about the Chihuahua, I think. That's Cody. That's my furby. The little demon. Yeah, the little demon, no, I know. he is not a demon, <laughs> you little jerk. <laughs> see, little demon. Here, I'll take you to see Teddy. He's the other dog. While she's walking, Steven, just uh, so you know, Zachary has started watching your Skyrim videos on his own because he loved your <laughs> thumbnails. <laughs> oh, okay. That's cool. I, I that is one of those things where um I I want those to work but know that I'm mainly just doing it for myself. <laughs> but it's really oh, nice. What do you say, Shannon? Zachary enjoys them. That's really cool. Yeah. I I th like I'm always like more pleasantly surprised, you know what I mean, if someone's sort of like Oh, this was really nice. I, it, I, I have no expectations whatsoever with that. So, but that's really cool, Shannon. Was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was doing those little uh, 
cutouts of Alduin, and then there was the the troll. Yeah, um, like it would be fun to um, actually sort of like get successful with that sort of content as well as like a little bonus. But like I know it's um, I know it's like outside of my you know my normal stuff. <sighs> Red Fox does. Let's play Skyrim videos. Damn right. Yeah, it, th but the thing is, I need to upgrade my computer as well because it's it's like it's a bit sad and embarrassing. Like when I'm trying to stream, you know, like when I was just I was trying to stream Call of Duty, which isn't it wasn't an, even a, a new game, and the stream was just turning into which a kind? potato. <laughs> <sighs> But uh, if I can upgrade my computer at one point, then it'll give me some more options. Because yeah, it would it would be so fun. Oh, hello, Natalie! <laughs> Just randomly popping in there. Have you finished with? Were you working? Did you say? No, oh. that was IR. That was I, that was Erin, wasn't it? H how's it going, Natalie? Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. I was having a little technical difficulties, but... Ah, okay. Yeah, I know all about those. Very familiar with technical difficulties. How are you, how are you doing? When did, when did you first uh, pop in? Were you in the background a while ago, I think? Uh, yeah, I was in earlier. Um, I, I was trying to figure out how the Zoom worked, so... Yeah. But you've, you've got it rolling. I, I'm sorry, I just, I love that there's just a full video of a dog, two dogs up there in the, in the top corner. I'm so easily distracted by animals. Um, but thank you for saying uh, hello, Natalie. I'm really tired now, by the way. It's like nearly one in the morning, so I will say goodbye in a second. But um, um, if, you, if you want, do you want to just say... Uh, like a tiny bit about yourself like I don't know like how you how you came across my channel or like anything like that oh well um I really enjoyed the secret garden a, a few years back and I really wanted to listen to it in audiobook so I just searched YouTube and your channel came up and I really enjoyed your interpretation of it um and I'm also enjoying the little princess by oh, nice. by nice. Francis so um, I'm from the Caribbean in Puerto Rico and just, um, just really glad to, to get to meet you. Mm, that, that's, that's really nice, Natalie. Pleasure to meet you as well. That's, that's really, really nice. Uh, when did you first find the Secret Garden then? Because it has been uh, on the channel for a while, of course. Have you been around for a while? Because I, honestly, I really... Um, I wish I could uh, sort of memorize things, but you're on Patreon. Um, when did you join, if you don't mind me asking? I'm sorry, I'm, this is not supposed to be like an FBI interrogation or anything. No, no. Um, recently, recently. I right, am, right, right. Yeah, I currently am listening to Little Princess and I'm listening, binging actually, the Harry Potter series. Oh. I'm on book three, so it's really it's really nice to, to be oh. able to listen to it. I encourage you to listen to Tamaria Prince too. It's pretty excellent. <laughs> oh, that sounds interesting. I never heard of it. Yeah, uh, Tamaria Prince is um, one of Teresa's absolute most favorite things. Oh yeah, uh, I think. Yeah, you were you were doing a few on on those Tamaria prints. Yes, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. It's kind of like <laughs> a loosely fictionalized version of the whole Kate and William love story. Oh, so it's like it has a happy ending, so it's cheesy and I love it. <laughs> yeah, we need those sort of cozy, uh, cozy guilty pleasures, though. Um, yeah, so like. Uh, Teresa sort of uh, commissioned that through Patreon uh, a very long time ago, uh, and I'm still working through it. I've been very slow, uh, so I was, um, I was releasing them as regular videos um, a very very long time ago, and then I read quite a lot of them on live streams, and then I'm back to recording it as uh, 
what will be a regular video again. So I'm going to do a part three with the next like seven or eight chapters or something like that. Um, but nice that you're binging uh, Harry Potter through through the Google Drive. Yeah, it's it's a fun read. It is. I'm yeah. you know I already read them, but you know rereading them it's like just as good as the first time. Ah, oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that's lovely. Like, I think you can like hear the the genuine the genuine enjoyment, uh, you know, coming through. Like, I I really um, I really loved reading the the Harry Potter stories, and it it, it wasn't like I was um, an enormous Harry Potter fan before either. Like, you know, I read all the books when they came out when I was a child and a teenager. Um, and uh you know i've seen all the films and everything mm -hmm. but i wasn't um a sort of potter head or anything you know and feeling like oh i've, oh, I've oh, got I've to managed. read I, i've got to narrate the harry potter books it wasn't it. some um burning impulse or anything right. but it was that's not enough to make the scale like so hard i'm Can just listening to me? shannon chatting to us sorry it's my okay. mom was talking to me it's all right um but it was it was one of those things it's like harry potter is fun like especially like from a narrator's perspective um there's just endless possibilities with that you know when it, when i was i was so new to uh this whole concept when i when i started that first harry potter book um so it, it was you know we've i've been talking about copyright and i'm sorry for the depressing conversation but um uh you just th this is why it is a big shame as well because these these modern books you know i don't care about the fame and fortune but just as like um a, 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 you know like a perfect way to practice what you're doing and like i know i could technically uh just record myself reading all the harry potter books privately and never distribute them but when it takes you about a hundred hours to you know produce each book it's uh it, it's a lot of time to, yeah, to dedicate that, on something that, that you can that no one can ever listen to that and no one can you know it's it's crazy but that was what was so magical about that when I didn't realize that it was going to be an issue um uh, sharing my reading of that um was just that sort of innocence that went into producing those and just I just really enjoyed it like every time there was a new character coming in yeah all the um, it's really fun yeah it, it's like but that that's um there's lots of things that I love about Lord of the Rings and Tolkien's work and everything but as as someone that enjoys reading stories if you just make it very simple um there's nothing better than fantasy creatures um, and just very vibrant characters. And that's something that Rowling does extremely well. Uh, you know, I think her characterization is uh, really wonderful. Like, obviously it helped, you know, you, you can use films as a model if uh, you know it could be a tv show or a film you can use it as a model if you wish and sometimes it's also nice to know what you don't want to do you know what i mean like you, you've just got like something that you can see and you're like no i don't want to do it like that so it can sort of help to put you in a different direction or like with harry potter with somebody like hagrid like i i could only hear that character played by that actor you know and 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 set and sp i mean she did write it in a west country english accent you know you can tell what she's trying to do as well um but still like i was i was terrible at the hagrid voice originally you know that was something that took a lot of work uh and at first i was like oh god no he's like he's one of my favorite characters and i'm gonna butcher this he's gonna sound like some texan like it that's been on holiday somewhere or something like just like this weird mishmash of things because i i hadn't worked out that uh voice at all 
Um, but as it went But at on, the same time, you didn't want to copy Robbie Coltrane. I mean, I, th- I wouldn't have minded. Like, he, <laughs> he was one of those, like I said, that I really just thought, gosh, he nails Hagrid. Like, they've done such a good job with that character. That, in my opinion, you know. Um, so, like, if I could have just copied him, I'd have been very happy. But in the first place, I just didn't have the skills. Um, but as it went on, you know, as, like, it, it's, it's, it's sometimes like that with a character. Like, if it's a particular voice that I've been trying very hard on, they can, at first, be an absolute nightmare. Um, and every time that character speaks, I'm like, oh no this, this is going to be really difficult um and even when i got better at editing and more confident with editing i was like okay i know i'm gonna have to spend a lot of time on these lines and um practicing them and and doing several versions and hoping to get a good one but then eventually generally the hard work pays off and they actually become your favorite character to voice because you've engaged it with it so much so it got to the point with Hagrid was that like I felt like I could I could have a full conversation just in Hagrid. You know, I could have just gone out the door and walked around the town being Hagrid. You know what I mean? You you feel like you've really like taken it, taken it on. And I really got really got the confidence with the accent and everything, you know, and you just get so into it, you feel like you can do it, you know, it's so satisfying. Um, Did doing Hagrid's voice hurt? Like, it was it rough on your voice? It was surprisingly not that bad. There, there was one chapter in Prisoner of Azkaban that I do remember. I think I was doing an, a lot of recording at that time as well. It was when I was working on Curse of the Ice Dragon, uh, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, uh, and doing live streams. And there was something else, like, all at the same time. Um and I, so I was recording a lot and I was under pressure with that audible Curse of the Ice Dragon audiobook as well. And there was one chapter where there was a lot of Hagrid and he was getting very emotional. I think it was the Bookbeak chapter in Prisoner of Azkaban. And uh, yeah, that, it, that was one of the first times that I've noticed it. And yeah, there have been certain characters. I think Treebeard from Lord of the Rings is still the worst. I've ever had. I think that was the first time I was a little bit worried. Like the next day, my voice was completely. You're you're gonna have to do a little bit of an example because I'm not gonna lie. I never listened to any of the Lord of the Rings books. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Brilliant. No, I know, I know. Lord of the Rings yeah. isn't your. What's that chapter that? was one of the very, very best of anything that you've ever done. The tree beard chapter. Yeah, I think that's that was one of the factors that so broke my heart with the Lord of the Rings. It was not only like, you know, my channel was doing very well again after uh, having to stop Harry Potter and those things. So like, you know, channels deleted, channels up and down. But the, it was not only that the channel was actually doing really well. Um, and I had to remove the main thing. It was not only that I was enjoying the story so much and enjoying making it so much, but I also felt like that chapter, I felt like I'd absolutely nailed it. Like just at that moment, you know, like when I when I shared it, um, I was so proud of it. Um, so the timing of that was was harsh. Do you know what I mean? Like when you feel like, I mean, it's, if you're going to end it, you might as well end it on a high yeah <laughs> but ah oh, like i was happy with the first chapter especially the uh, opening scene with aragorn uh, you know i thought chapter 10 of um of book two uh, everything came together really well um the hobbits scattered everywhere and gimlin legolas going running off and sam breaking down and petrified for Frodo, Frodo's gone missing, you've had the Frodo and Boromir scene, Aragorn feels like the wheels have gone off the wagon and everything, there's orcs attacking, and I I felt that the voicing of everything was just making sense, like Gimli was working really well, I was feeling more confidence with Legolas, Um, Aragorn felt like my best friend, like I could just be Aragorn anytime, Boromir again, it was like Aragorn and Boromir were like two parts of my consciousness, like I could just like have chats with them with Gandalf in the middle sort of like smoking his pipe and everything 
uh it just felt so natural uh the hobbits you know frodo and sam that i didn't get to do book four with frodo sam and Gollum is is just that is unacceptable because mm-hmm. that like i was waiting for that the whole time like frodo and sam i was so comfortable with how i was characterizing those i was really happy with it and just couldn't wait to do smeagol um but yeah at the end of book two felt like the stars were aligning uh we'd had those lovely things with maria and and galadriel you know um and then book three begins uh that song was very difficult uh but i loved that opening with aragon running down and you could hear the which i literally did just like that and then added reverb uh with with boromir's horn in the distance and aragon comes crashing through and boromir's wounded it's so good um and and then the riders of rohan i was i was really struggling with what on earth i do with Ima um because originally i was going to have them as german like a bit of a sort of german accent to give this sort of anglo-saxon germanic uh, vibe um because there's definitely those influences in tolkien's writing but then i decided to stick more with the geography of the united kingdom there was there were certain things that were influencing me with that decision so i wanted them to be closer to Gondor like how I was perceiving Gondor and everything um so then I just really focused on how I was going to characterize Ioma and I was super pleased with that I did multiple recordings of that it was driving me insane but I was really pleased with how it came out in the end like he felt so uh forceful brave and commanding yet still like youthful and a little bit uncertain very like dazzled by Aragorn but you were so aware that he was in front of 100 of his men that he was commanding at a young age and could feel like this pressure on his shoulders but he was sort of like who are you what are you doing here like he'd got like he'd got balls you know but he was also like very willing to be uh, to be like I'm you know I'm terribly sorry to hear of that Boromir was a fine man like he was sort of humble as well and like I just so liked how that worked, and you've got Gimli and Legolas getting all upset. It was it was cool, um, and then you've got the orcs in the third chapter, which I that nearly killed my throat actually, as well, uh, doing the Urukai with the Cockney London accent, which was something I wasn't too sure about either. But I was really pleased with that, and the little goblins. What are you talking about? Where are we going? And all that sort of stuff. I just thought it was so fun in there. You get walking. And all these sorts of things. I'm going to have you, you swine. And so it's just so much fun. I was like, that's come together really well. And there was the creepy dude. I forgot his name. The creepy orc who's whispering stuff. Uh, really pleased with it and then i was like this is the big one the ends the ends you've got to nail this you've got to nail this like the ends are so cool they're so important um and i knew that i sort of wanted to do it like the tree beard tree beard from the movie but also not like the tree beard from the movie because uh I didn't want him to have any Scottishy sort of tones underlying because that voice actor who plays Gimli uh, does Treebeard in the films. And there was just something with his accent that I didn't want. Um, and I didn't want him to sound as breathy. I didn't want him to be sort of like, oh, I'm tree. Like, I wanted it to be more. Oh, I'm true. like more bass, like a big woodwind instrument, which is how he describes it. So I pictured it as like a bassoon with legs <laughs> and very big. So sort of, and then like I uh, 
I edited it as well to give it this uh, sort of reverb and a bit of extra resonance and everything. Um, but doing those songs with the ants and the whole... Um, and wives. Uh, huh? The ants and the ant wives song. Yeah, the ant and the ant wives. There was multiple uh, things. There was his little list, you know, when he's like listing off all the different peoples then there's the end and the end wife song and there's the um i forgot what it was called not gold beam what was his you know the other end friend yeah that was so lovely what was it called um and he'd got a lovely end name as well um quick beam uh, quick beam <laughs> yeah the the young sprightly one <laughs> yeah uh fantastic who like swayed in the wind when he was thinking mm. um oh it's so adorable and like that literally made me cry that quick beam thing i i just thought it was absolutely adorable like so just such feeling in the writing i thought it was brilliant mm. and then it was the march of the ends that yeah. i loved really? so much at the end like there were, there's a couple of people uh le left some constructive criticism on how i approached that one like to do with it being a a marching song but it, for me it was like yeah it's a marching song but it's not a human marching song it's an ent marching song like i didn't think it would have because some a couple of people mentioned that they thought it would be more quick paced um but it's not like for me they're not humans they're not going to be like because they're the massive riding out there they're like huge strides mm -hmm. so for me, it had to go with the stride, like it had to have the same pace as their steps, like we do with a marching song. You know what I mean? Like the left, right, left, right. But for them, it's left and right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that had to go in the tune. So that's why I wanted it to be sort of like, we come, we come, we go. You know, that sort of thing. It had to go with the like, as they go through the forest you know uh and i oh we go isn't it we go we go yeah yeah i flipping loved that i, I and i and that was one of the first times where i sort of thought god i actually i actually really sang that mm -hmm. i really like you know that sort of like we go to war and it like really like resonated like i was really pleased with the voice work there <sighs> and then it got taken down <laughs> but still there, Steve. you did it yeah yeah but yeah but that was the thing it's like when you feel like you're mm. um you've you've made one of the best mm. pieces of content you've ever done if not the best thing you've mm. ever done um and it's like mm. yeah stop that delete all that and you know that they actually told me to delete all versions of it even private versions and uh it's like are you are you like darth vader's biggest uncle or like <laughs> what is, what are you like are you crazy no but i just think like asking someone to delete I just think that's crazy. Like saying, like you cannot distribute this anymore on YouTube. You cannot record more of it and just like fair play, you know. Fair it's play. like telling a painter to destroy their paintings. Exactly, it's insane. Like, well, yeah, you go burn your book. Go, go burn your book. Uh, go tear your painting down and throw it on the fire. Give up. Like, it's just, uh, like, are you insane? Like, it's a work of art, like, basically, that, that someone's poured yeah. hundreds of hours in. And not only that, but, like, so much love and passion and creativity and feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, but that that's what upsets me with copyright as well. And people are just, like, they're riding on the coattails of deceased people. I just mm -hmm. think it's disgusting like you know with jk rowling it's one thing like if if she uh, was to actually explicitly say um please don't uh, do that please yeah. don't read my book yeah like but like she's alive but like mm -hmm. talking you know even his son has passed away now bless him 
a ripe old age as well. I mean, was he 90 something? I think Christopher Tolkien, you know, like, I, I just think, who are you? I, you know, I mean, I know this is controversial stuff and I know there's a lot of people out there that will disagree with me and things, but, um, but I just think it's a disgrace for the name of someone, you know, that you're like saying, we're defending the name of Professor J.R. Tolkien. Like, no, you know, <laughs> like they're defending not, you... their ability to collect more money from yeah. sales. They're defending their profits. Yeah, yeah. Let's you're... not mix the two up. You're you're not a noble knight in shining armor. I'm sorry. However much you tell yourself that before you sleep at night, you're really not. Like you've mm. not worked for this at all. Mm. I'm sorry, but you've not. You've not. I'm going to turn in, mm. people. I'm going to go to bed. Absolutely. Here. I really tangented hard from uh, from what. Uh, Natalie was uh, saying there, like I, I had a point, but uh, it was fun talking about Lord of the Rings, though. And Stephen, you need to get it out. Yeah, but yeah, and just reliving the joy that I had when I was making those—that's a nice thing, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, definitely, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's one of the things that's tricky with the classics is. Um, you know the, the the just the richness and uh yeah they're they're different they're different um but sherlock holmes i'm really pleasantly surprised with that uh like i i liked jekyll and hyde but i it feels like sherlock holmes was written 50 years later than jekyll mm. and hyde yeah. when i think it's actually slightly older uh or basically contemporaries but you know what i mean like when with jekyll and hyde you're sort of aware that it's an old book it it, it it's really nice i think it's a it's a great little story but it feels 19th century mm. as uh as a study in scarlet it doesn't it really doesn't you know like reading that uh chapter today like and I, like i said i've been reading the book and practicing it and stuff it's so vibrant. It's so like exciting, like a real, um, like a real modern page turner. You know, really nice. It doesn't have ants in it, or like spiders hiding in forests and things. But you put some in. <laughs> you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but Teresa, you know, you're on about the uh, like you'd not heard. Uh, Treebeard, uh, like obviously you could just go and listen to the Treebeard chapter, obviously. But um, I was sort yeah, of doing you're like right a there. Huh? You're right there. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> but um, uh, but I did a sort of Treebeard light uh, in a live stream a couple of streams back because I read um, one of the uh, Hans Christian Andersen stories like sort of in a tree beard voice the, fir, the fir tree i like that yeah the oak tree um yeah i, th I thought it was the fir tree it was the oak tree the fir tree is the next one that i'll probably read. oh okay okay yeah. i was confused oh no no it's i i mentioned the fir tree so it is it is complicated it is confusing sorry but um the fir tree will probably be the first one that i read on the next stream which is like a, a story about a christmas tree um but yeah, that was called either the last oak or like the last song of the oak or something about the oak. Mm -hmm. But um, what well, it was sort of fun that wasn't it though? Like sort of trying to do it in a voice. It would be nice to have some of your old characters coming out and reading short stories. Yeah, yeah, people have have said that as well. Um, yeah, I've played around with the concept a little bit here and there. Mm. Um, I think for a short story, like I was earlier, I was thinking of um, an orc reading the tale of Peter Rabbit. <laughs> like, Cute. Yeah, uh -huh. like like an orc reading a bedtime story to yeah. his orc children about yeah. this tasty rabbit. Yeah, I think that's yeah. fun. Yeah. 
could also butcher it, but sort of. You're so know. dark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean butcher the story, not the rabbit. Sure, sure. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Like the headphones, Shannon, with the little. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are nice. The horns. <laughs> I tried to use my Bluetooth earbuds, and for some reason, I could not get those to work. <laughs> so I'm going to say good night, everybody. Yeah, let's let's all say good night. Uh, Natalie popped off again. Lady Bookworm's sleeping. Uh, I uh oh, Natalie's <laughs> popped back in. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry for waffling on there, Natalie, but I hope it was somewhat somewhat relevant. Um, yeah, I uh, was. Uh, um Erin was working, I think. Um yeah, but let's let's all say goodbye. Well, you don't have to. You you can stay here. I can go. <laughs> <laughs> it's your Zoom meeting now. Teresa, it's gonna be a party of two. <laughs> uh I don't know. I have about three hundred emails to answer. Yeah, Ooh, let's work. let's all say goodbye because I think if I end the meeting, it might end the meeting regardless. I'm not yeah. sure because I'm the host. It for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your yeah. hands. Yeah, the power. Oh, he's the fox king. So, and real quick, real quick. Sorry, I never answered a question earlier from earlier. Uh, the other two people I patron, one uses uh, Hangouts and Google Hangouts, and the other uses a Discord server. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. For but sure. uh, but yeah. But you've not come across um, someone using Zoom yet. Nope. You're the first. You're a leader. You failed. I feel like there must mm. be people out there, but I've not noticed it. But there must be. There must be. Must be. Don't know. I'm going to try and advertise it better. Now that this has been so nice, I'm going to try and advertise it better. Because I, I just genuinely think there are more of you out there that would enjoy a good old mingle, especially with all the corona mm. stuff. You know, we all also... need a little... Sorry. What? Also, couldn't you uh, advertise maybe Easter eggs being read during the Zoom meetings? Because technically like they're not, technically they're not recorded, so you can't get uh, in trouble for hiding someone else's Easter eggs. Yeah, I I was very aware of that idea. Um, yeah, I I had that idea, um, but it it do it does make it harder to sleep at night. Though I'm not gonna lie, you know that there's just um, I just I just don't want to get sued you know it's like you you think you think there's like a 0.001% chance that uh something happens and then i get an email from someone that says hi um we, we were listening you in were... on your zoom meeting yeah exactly and we're gonna sue you and delete your well, the advantage of and... a zoom meeting is that you can make it so that you have to have a password and you have a waiting room and only the host can admit people and if you register beforehand you can also ban people from joining the zoom meeting you have absolute control over who you enter into the room but i but i don't know who's entering the room that's the thing like uh, like ir for example like i didn't know ir was erin uh so it's like you're gonna have to add a lot of security steps to sort of like validate and you never know, like someone might just in the most innocent way, like mention something to someone and somehow it goes to someone. And it sounds, I know it sounds like depressing and silly, but um, receiving yeah. that email from the Tolkien estate was one of the worst things I've ever experienced. Um, I mean, technically, like I've had a weird life, so it probably doesn't even get into the top 10 like realistically <laughs> of worse things um like uh, probably probably not in the top 10 but but like technically it's it's like in a in a sort of <sighs> yeah in in many ways it was absolutely dreadful like really dreadful and i've worked so hard on um 
um, trying to make this current YouTube channel completely legit and something that I can like, you know, take a breath, not worry about it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. sleep easy. It's like, you know, and it still does bother me. Like, like I said, like with that little princess book, like worried, like, Oh, I, what if I get a copyright strike? Cause I'm using a video of the book, you know? It, it, so it's like, I, as much as I would love, and you know, I've done this on Twitch and things like, I would absolutely love to say, Hey, let's have some Harry Potter or Hey, let's have some Lord of the Rings. Um, I feel that I'm just spitting in their faces. You know what I mean? Those, yeah. I've no excuse. Like if that uh, publishing company somehow found out and they care for whatever reason, yeah. I can't, I have no defense. I have no defense. I'm like, yeah, you, you get me. So like, I would absolutely flip in love to read those stories like I absolutely adore those stories and other things that I never really got to get stuck into like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Terry Pratchett stories and all sorts of stuff but um, you don't want to poke a sleeping bear it yeah it does freak me the f out it really does so I think at least for the time being I don't want to make any promises that I don't feel comfortable with so for the time being like well, we can hang out. Um, we, I can do some reading here. We can read as a group. You know, we can we can talk about what everyone to talk about and have like let's just like appreciate this as as like this like little bonus community that it is the book club extra, um, and not poke any bears right here right now. And you know, like I I I'll, I'll happily like. Uh, play around with voices maybe read a scene I, you know I was thinking like we could always like read a scene from Harry Potter or sing a Lord of the Rings poem or something like you know like a little nugget that's like just between friends but I think Snape it's like... reading a bedtime story what Snape reading a bedtime story oh my yeah. god yes <laughs> that, those sorts of things as well absolutely but like I think if I read a whole chapter I think you just you're just asking for trouble I think you just you're just like saying smite me oh mighty smiter <laughs> <laughs> you look confused Teresa no I'm reading emails I just left <laughs> my camera on I've been working for basically the entire zoom chat oh, that's why I had my you. camera off yeah have you seen Bruce Almighty many many times oh, okay i love that movie okay you got the reference you just didn't let on oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's your concentration face it is my concentration face <laughs> all right it's been super super nice super super nice so do we call this um book club extra what do we call it i feel like we can do better but um Book club 2.0. Have some time to think about it. We can come up with a good fox. No, we can't use the fox den because he already uses the fox den. I know. Uh, I've taken all the good ones. Um, Darn you, Stephen. <laughs> the foxy lair? That sounds. The lair of the fox. <laughs> it, it sounds 18 rated. <laughs> Um, well, depends how the chat goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Teresa, behave for right now. <laughs> that's impossible. I'll think about it. I'll, <laughs> I'll think about it. Some people even get offended by the word. Wait, wait, wait. So. Uh, we don't talk about her anymore. Oh. We're <laughs> technically a Fox family, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fox. No. We have the Fox House mm. on Discord. Yeah. Couldn't we, we technically have a, like a living room, the Foxy living room, the Foxy <laughs> dining room? Because everyone, the kitchen table, everyone talks at the kitchen table. Mm hmm. I don't know. I'm waffling. But the Fox <laughs> House could work. But don't we have the Fox House? 
But it's only the, the welcome fuck? room on Discord, isn't it? Yeah, technically. Like you would know what I was talking about if I said see you in, in the hen house. See you in the fox house. Like I said, I'm waffling. No, no, no. It's it's a valid it's a valid suggestion, Sean. I think we suggestion. need more time to think about it. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Five and a half. Wait, wait. Uh, did we start on time at two thirty? Our time, Teresa, or Roughly, did you show yeah. up late? So it's. About five hours. This is not yeah. unheard of for a foxy stream, though. So this isn't anything new for us. That's that's true. Well, no, I'm... there's been six <laughs> hour ones, hasn't there? I think. That's ridiculous. That, yes, I think your record was like six or seven hours. Mm, not that's not healthy. Safe. Not healthy. No. Teresa, you were there too. <laughs> <laughs> I never claimed to be healthy. <laughs> true. <laughs> I'm saying good night. Yes. Good night, let's... Mama Fox. Oh, good night, Mama Fox. It was nice to see you. And you. Let's all say good night. We won't make it a big thing. It's not like we're never going to see each other again. <laughs> never <laughs> say never, Stephen. <laughs> Shush, <laughs> Teresa. Have a nice night, everybody. Lovely good to night. meet you, Natalie. Thank good you, good Shannon. You Thank you, you Teresa. Good night. And bye bye, Erin, if you're in the background. Lynette's sleeping. I'm not worrying about her. And bye bye. <laughs> To Mama Fox. Mama <laughs> Fox is so pretty. <laughs> night, night, everybody. Good night, night, Mama Fox. Night. Read to you soon. No, no, no. Oh, you gotta say it right. Cute. Say it right. Read to you soon. Oh, that's much <laughs> my brain tingled. And you realize that none of us are actually getting off until you end the meeting, right? I know. I am very aware. Well <laughs> that is it. true. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Night. Night, boss man.